You're listening to Santos Bonacci, live on Syncretism, here on criticalmassradio.co.uk. As above and so below is the holy science you need to know. Astrotheology. Because now, it's our turn. You're listening to Kate of Gaia on Critical Mass Radio. The game is up. Now, it's our turn. Indeed it is. Welcome to Friday night. Standard night for syncretism with Santo Bonacci and yours truly, of course, Kate of Gaia, sitting co-helming here on a wonderful Friday evening of uh, watching this planetary system crumble to the ground. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just been... Oh, another normal day for us, anyway. Uh, Santo, my friend, how are you doing? Very well, thanks, Kate. Yourself? Good, good. Yeah, we're getting uh, we're getting things done here, and uh, I just love watching it unfold in real time. Once you learn how to see headlines as being allegorical clues versus literal effects, if you believe the headline, then you're kind of going, "Oh, that's the game." No, you're missing the you're missing the fun. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's gonna be gonna be a fun night, me thinks. Yeah, me too. Uh, really, what uh, what we're relishing in is the fact that we understand everything that is panning out on this world, everything that we see in the newspaper, on the news, and everything. we know how to read it, we know how to understand it, uh, because we've got um, the highest perspective possible. And um, that is achieved once we awaken to who we are. And it's so important to know the self. This is the most important thing that we can do now. And as we do so, oh boy, you watch the fictions crumble. They, they will crumble. And um, <clears throat> the master of knowledge is the master of the ecliptic, period. You don't know the ecliptic, you don't know shit. That's it. That's all I've got to say. You've got to know, you've got <laughs> yeah, that, to know the ecliptic. That pretty much covers it. Yeah, you're absolutely right on that. Um, <clears throat> interesting to note that uh, you know the the ferryman uh, Chiron, right? Uh, that ferry yep. ferries the souls across the river Styx to, of course, Hades or Hecate or whatever you, um, Pluto, uh, as we like to see it. But isn't it interesting to note that <clears throat> when Chiron comes to the shore uh, to pick anyone up, he is only going to pick up those that have a silver coin in their mouth, and to let people know what that means. I know what it means allegorically. As soon as I, <laughs> I see that concept, it's like, oh, yeah, well, only those that speak truth are allowed on the boat to cross. And remember, Pluto is all about destruction and creation. It is both. It has to be both. Everything has to be both good and evil at the same time. And uh, if you're caught up in any sort of drama regarding um, negative feelings, emotions, the things that are stopping you, uh, then you are still being polarized to one uh, degree or another. And this, for me, uh, is the toughest thing for people to finally come to terms with. And um, there, is much, there is much bliss in the golden rule, because that which was wished upon you is going out in the mirror. So this whole notion of vengeance is already a predetermined thing anyway um let nature take its course i w i refuse to in interfere with it any longer that would be like trying to change the the planets and their orbits and and what have you to mess the game up no i don't mess with nature anymore <laughs> i'm done with that so yeah speak truth and the boatman will pick you up <laughs> stay in the lies and well guess you're going to have to wait another round uh, to figure that one out uh, as I depart on a lateral timeline where um, others will stay in the literal. Yeah, add, it, add to uh, speaking truth, I would say um, save your oil, your oil because uh, remember the five foolish virgin, virgins that uh, so desperately wanted to be married with the Lord, the Lamb, the Saviour, the higher mind. But uh, they ran out of oil, so um, they didn't have any spare oil in their receptacles. They had to go off at the hour that the lamb, the lord, the bridegroom came. And the five uh, wise virgins, oh yeah, they went, they were married. And um, in other words, this is the alchemical marriage. You know, the Rosicrucians talk about this all the time. And the alchemical marriage is the marriage of uh, the higher mind, you see, um, where Jesus said to his disciples, 
to celebrate the next Passover, you must follow the man with the water pitcher in his hands and go to the upper chamber. Well, that's the third ventricle, of course. But um, Aquarius is um, standing right at the fontanelle on top of the head, the sutra where the um, energy of the toroidal, toroidal field enters into the in the middle of the head, the North Pole, where Santa Claus lives. And uh, so this is where Aquarius is pouring in his waters, you see. So what we need to do is to allow those waters to come in. They need to flood in from on top, from on high, from heaven, head. And what's happening is that uh, most of the... Um, the plebeian masses that have been dumbed down by Rome and all of their pornographic uh, pedophile churches, etc., propaganda and all sorts of mind control called government, have uh, stripped people of that and they've blocked that um, flow coming in from the top of their heads. And the other thing is, you know, they don't have that Holy Spirit flowing through their bodies, which is key energy, Christ King energy. And... Um, Mostly it's blocked because they go around wearing shoes all the time. Not many people earth, you know, on a daily basis. But if you don't get five or ten minutes earthing, you know, you, you're going to hang on to your scary demons from the day yesterday and the day before. The only way to discharge them is by earthing, really, you know, getting rid of negative thought forms. And this is what's blocking churchgoers from receiving the Christ. They are actually blasphemously um, anti-Christ. That they are anti-Christian. All churches are. They are the enemy of the church, the true church. And the true church is the church within. That that each and every true Christian that bears true fruit um, is in uh, by hereditary, by you know having done the good works in past lives. Um, many of our brothers today on this planet do not have enough. Um, they don't have enough fire energy. They don't have enough fire in them from past lives. You know, they've been quite lazy and squandered their oils in riotous living in past lives. So they don't bring much spirituality with them in this life. And it is a big, it's going to be a big mountain for many of them to climb, rest assured. But um, as for the ones who... Uh, and in particular, the listeners on this table, for sure, you know, um, they've done, they know in their heart of hearts that they've done a lot of yards in past lives because they bring with them, you know, a lot of suffering and a lot of toil and um, a lot of um, illumination from, from past lives. You know, there's some great souls here right now that are, um, you know, allowing the the figurative New Jerusalem to to be created, which is just really just the higher consciousness. You see, the reason why Jerusalem on 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 Earth is so fought after city is because above the city in the etheric realms there is actually a city called New Jerusalem, and uh, the Templars and all of the esoteric churches, the Essenes who went to Jerusalem in the first place from Egypt. Um, they went there because of this um, this Metatron New Jerusalem uh, crystal um, city that is just above the hills of Marwa. Marwa meaning the mountain of Mars. Every great city is built on the mountain of Mars. See Rome, see the Acropolis. Um, but uh, the mountain of Mars is, is the cranium. It's that's Mars is the top ruler. He's he rules Aries. He's right on top. You know, um, and so, but every physical city has its etheric city, and along the beautiful lays of the earth, the beautiful um, dodeca icosahedronal um, energy lines of the earth in the ethers, just above Jerusalem is one of the most beautiful crystalline cities, you know, known to man. This is why they want Jerusalem. They want because when 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 the portals come, the four cardinal um, days of the year, uh, what happens is the Essenes used to go to Mount Marwa in Jerusalem to receive the higher consciousness because of um, New Jerusalem, which is above the the uh, mound there. 
um, it is a holy place. Simple, <laughs> rest assured, it is a it's a very holy place. All of those places are holy, you know. They're not um, unholy at all. It's just the uh, the unholy uh, uh, usurpers and uh, conspirators against humanity that have taken those sites from us and have used them in inversive ways to feed, continually feed their demon that they created many thousands of years ago. Yeah, you're absolutely right on that. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to like uh, as as you're talking uh, you're you know, of course I'm listening into into the liter or the um, allegories versus the literals and uh you're mentioning about uh, the people at the table here. Well, here's a little note, a little epiphany that, uh, and it hit me a long time ago. It's uh, it's just getting clearer and clearer. Um, you, you're probably familiar with uh, the story of um, the angels knocking at, at the door, yeah? And be, be ever mindful of, um, you know, the the door. And yeah. who, and and, he was there, right? And who you entertain, because right. you could be entertaining uh, higher dimensional beings at any moment. Well, that's what everyone at this table is. Yep. I just thought I'd let yep. you, let you guys know that because that's who you are. Yeah, and that that includes the creepy, crawly shills that are listening in, you know, because yep. they're um, they've uh, you know, they're actually getting what we're saying. There's, they can't deny that. That's if they've got intelligence in them, um, and they realise that um, da- the day's coming. Uh, and it is now, really, because it always is now, when they will have to jump on this boat and get on it to be saved. So they're very, very lucky that they've been paid a salary to listen into us, to shill on us, and um, because they're just going to jump on this boat to be salvaged. We make no mistake about it, we are in the salvage game, you see. We need to save our self. Self comes from salt. So our pillars of salt, the reason we incarnate is because we have been given all of these beautiful, precious, archetypal bodies to work with. You know, the lords of, um, for instance, the lungs are the lords of Gemini. And we have 12 lords and our body is made of 12 systems. And this temple of Solomon. And so when you go to Gemini, for instance, you will find a constellation, a deacon called Canis Major. That's the canine, and that's where Sirius is. Sirius is the bluest, brightest star in the sky. It is, in fact, the binary of our sun. We are in a system with Sirius and other stars, like a molecule. And the Pleiades are also in this system. But um, Sirius represents the lungs. She, is, um, she gives breath to our souls. She breathes. Every time we take a breath, this is Isis in the sky. And just above the lungs is the larynx. That's her little hubby, Osiris. And just above the larynx are the vocal cords. That's how you get to hear my voice. That would be their son, their progeny, Horus, the word of God. So every time you speak, your... Um, Words are being carried through the wings of Isis, the lungs. And the larynx is uh, the motor, uh, Osiris, her beautiful husband. And, of course, Horus, the uh, hawk, the eye that sees, that would be your vocal cords. And, um, <clears throat> and in the Christian system, that's the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, or the Father and the Mother, or the mother and the father and the son. They've just appropriated, you know, this trinity. And uh, the word of God is your vocal cords. You have power to create through speech. And, uh, you know, sometimes we need, we use lovey-dovey nice words because we want to create certain, um, you know, uh, fiery uh, interactions with other beings or um, responses. And sometimes we use nasty words to uh, wake them up, you know, and they get hurt at first, but they don't realize that it's their little lower ego, the ego of the personality, because the ego incarnated, the spirit of God, the higher individual ego, um, that is here to uh, remember that we are all one. So when I um, praise someone or offend someone, 
that's always for the same reason, you know. Um, it's criminals like uh, Joe Dolezal Sr., David Simonton, and scumbags like that, who, when they use nasty words, rest assured they are doing it to take away your energy to steal from you, to vampire from you, as he has done with Jordan Maxwell's beautiful, beautiful wisdom. He's sitting there lurking in the background like a venomous spider, a scorpion, uh, ready to sell people and make money from the wisdom of Jordan Maxwell. Well, Jordan Maxwell will one day have to leave and depart this realm. Uh, but... Um, you rest assured that the great works that Jordan has uh, created and supported by so many good people will never allow this crime to just happen. <laughs> uh, you're going to get destroyed, you know. You're going to get smashed to pieces. Whoever you are that, you, you know, uses your, your, your Isis, Osiris, uh, Horus mechanism to um, steal from other people. Uh, Santos Bonacci, yours truly, has only ever, ever given for free to humanity. Uh, I don't take anybody's um, you know, property and say, oh, it's mine. I give uh, honor and respect where it's due. And I always mention my uh, teachers, you know, whether they be Hermes, Jesus, Thomas H. Burgoyne, the Reverend Robert Taylor, uh, Gerald Massey, Godfrey Higgins, I always give them their credit, and I give myself credit of the uh, syncretic uh, sine wave and ecliptic, which is totally 100% original. Thank you very much. So, you know, I'd just like to remind these creeps that the days of stealing from people, you know, and... Um, and using other people's good work just to uh, uh, because just because you are in, in, an insignificant piece of shit, um, that's no way to get famous, you know. And you'll never, you will never ever come past me because I'm the keeper of uh, you know all the truths, and um, and I make sure that no bullshit gets past. <laughs> you know, that's my job. I kind of you know uh, do it uh, with due diligence. And uh, I'm on guard 24 hours. So, you know, any creepy crawlies that come past my way, they get smashed to pieces. And uh, only the truth lingers on here. So, anyway, that's um, that was the negative out of the way. Um, I was going to talk about the Christmas season and the stars therein and how important it is to uh, look up. Whenever you are looking for the real reason or true meaning behind a festivity, look up at midnight. Look up to the ecliptic and you will find the reason for the season. <laughs> um, for instance, 1st of November, look up at midnight and you will see the Pleiades directly at the MC. I won't say directly above your head because that's gotten me into a lot of trouble because there are not many astronomical type <laughs> people around today anymore. <laughs> so when I say look up, well, if you're in Scandinavia, looking up means just look up about 30 degrees above, um, the, you know, looking um, down towards the south, toward the equator, but you would need to look at about, I don't know, 30 or 40 degrees latitude. Um, because you are so close to the North Pole that the ecliptic is not overhead as it would be if you lived in Ecuador. So in Ecuador, yes, you look up and you will see the Pleiades directly above your head on November the 1st. So the reason for the season is always upstairs at 12 o'clock. So you have to know this. You have to know that you must wait till midnight and then you look directly up. Well, on Christmas... What happens? Uh, well, when you look up at midnight, uh, let's say you're in Ecuador now, <laughs> and directly above you'll see Sirius, because of course she is opposite um, Sagittarius Capricorn, where the sun is, and so the sun will be directly below your feet at midnight, uh, any time at midnight, it will always be below your feet, uh, <laughs> wherever you live. So... 
directly up at Christmas, you see the brightest star of the, of the, of the skies on the ecliptic. And uh, directly below is her son, our solar uh, primary of our solar system. And this is an alignment. It's an alignment of Sirius, Earth and Sun. And so it is also celebrated on the 24th Christmas Eve that this at midnight that this is established as as the first moment of the sun returning back to the Tropic of Cancer and commencing his climb on the ecliptic. So so what you have is uh, directly up up above you have the reminder of this Isis that we are in a binary with Isis, Sirius. And so when the Sun is conjunct Sirius, the opposite of this um, season we're in now, around about July 4th, which is um, uh, Apohelion Day, the Sun is conjunct Sirius. But uh, on Christmas, during the Christmas festive season, midnight, you look up and you will see at the top of the Christmas tree, um, Sirius, the brightest star in the sky. And not too far from Sirius, uh, probably only about, I don't know, 15 degrees, not too far at all, you'll see the uh, three stars in the belt of Orion. And you'll see them coming from the east. They're not coming from the west. Every, all the stars along the ecliptic rise in the east. And this is the three wise men that follow the star that come from the east to see where the sun is born. Well, the sun is born at midnight because the gospel tells you that. It says, and they follow the star till the star stops and hovers above the house where the Christ is born. Well, that would be cancer. Um... You see, because you look straight up and Sirius is in between Gemini and Cancer and right near Sirius there are two stars, one above the ecliptic in the north and one below the ecliptic. They're straddling the ecliptic. And this is, these are the two stars that are called the two donkeys, the northern and the southern donkey. Uh, Acellus Borealis in the north and Acerus Australis in the south. And they form a, a cluster of stars in the center of the sign of cancer called the manger. And so this is why you always see two donkeys in the manger. Because at midnight, when you look up to find the reason for the season, because that's where it will be, might be anywhere else, it will always be above your head at midnight. And... Um, and so you will see the three wise men coming from the east in the direction of the east and there is Sirius directly above the house Capricorn where the sun is born and uh, there are all the, uh, the manger and all the crew, the shepherds outdoors of course because the shepherds are in reference to the star called Alfirk um, in Capricorn which is the shepherd and the flocks are called... Um, I forget the name of the flocks, but the shepherds outdoors are always in reference to the initiates, and in particular, the shepherds and the flocks in Capricorn. Hey, and I so, yep. Hi, Sandro. Sorry, my mic was open. I just came in the call. Sorry. Bye. <laughs> no, no problem. No Keep problem at out, all. Darling. Keep going. Yeah, and uh, so the same thing happens. Um, with all the seasons, when you when you come to the season, you look up. Uh, for instance, on July seventh, the Japanese have a festival called Tanabata, where the two heroes Vega and Altair, the fifth and the twelfth brightest star in the sky, straddling the Milky Way galactic plane. Um, only on July the 7th at midnight you will see them directly above. And you will see the glorious Milky Way plane intersecting the skies. You know, there it is. 
straight through the centre of the sky. July 4th, that's why July 4th and Independence Day and July and all of this sun being in Cancer is so powerful. Because, you know, you've got the pillar of, um, you see, when Moses uh, led the Israelites out of the, um, the wilderness, there was, a pir- uh, there was a pillar of fire by day, uh, by a, pillar, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Well, that's the Milky Way galaxy, dear friends. <laughs> you know, um, that's that's how you get led out of um, out of uh, Egypt. Egypt is the lower nature, Earth, and so to get out of her, my people, Babylon, Egypt, you know, uh, I don't know any other place, Rome, it, all these places you've got to get out of in Scripture. That's just dealing with the lower nature. And so the Milky Way, the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud um, that Jehovah erects in the wilderness, these are our, these are the um, the ecliptic and the galactic plane in the heavens, and these are the only guide that we have and always will have. So the sooner we get back to the science of the stars and be true pastors and ministers, minister comes from. Uh, moon. It also comes from Ammon, because Ammon Ra is also the moon god. So you've got minister, um, you know, Amin or Ammon star. So to be a, a minister, minister is to um, you know praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There's t- there it is, it's telling you, it's telling you in your face, in the name of Jesus, Amen. <laughs> you know, the dunces in churches will always be using that word, and, and good on them, because they are attributing glory and praise to our star in the heavens, which is called Aum. Amen. That's the name of our son. Unfortunately, will- I was going to say. Unfortunately, at this point, though, what what's happening? And I've, I just want to outline this. Uh, this is beautiful. I'm loving where you're going tonight. Uh, unfortunately, the the ones that are controlling the religion aspect, not not the true uh, Christ consciousness um, attributes. What they're they're actually taking that energy uh, and using it against those that are actually. So it's a, they're doing it backwards. They're worshiping Baal, not uh, well. It's the Lord, you know. Deny the Lord Jesus Christ three times, and that's what they're talking about. The Lord, which is the physical uh, attribute, the uh, the dark principality, uh, Earth physical side of things, the carnal. Yep, absolutely. And uh, how they do this is by by. Um, Counterfeiting, counterfeiting, or exchanging the true Lord with their demon. So when they go to church, they do actually get baptized in the Lord. Rest assured, when they get baptized and are born again, they are being born again for sure. But it's it, it's in their it's being they're being born into their their demon. There is there are demons in church. And these are just, um, you know, they're not necess- <clears throat> they don't demons are not necessarily bad. They are thought forms, and they are just miniature demiurguses who want to be demiurgos. And the demiurgos, you know, as the Gnostics used to say, always wants to be, you know, wants to be God. This Jehovah kicking around saying, "Hey, look at my, look at my illusion that I've created. How sexy it is." He's a wannabe. You know, in the Gnostic science, he wants to be the prime, the prime soft, uh, the, the the iron soft, the prime creator. You know, and so, but but what they've got in church is a miniature miniature of this that they themselves originated themselves. It's not the the God that originated them. You see, so they they've created a false idol. And so Christmas is nothing but an empty, shredded to pieces uh, delusion for them because they they think all the symbolisms, you know, all the symbolisms have been corrupted. And so, you know, this little Christmas tree, rather than realizing that it's the the little tree is the the root of Jesus. 
Sethi, which is the which is the symbol of the sun, um, you know, being born again, saying, you know, um, the evergreen tree is a symbol of a life immortal, life eternal, that soul invictus shall never be conquered. And how many people are brought out of their Christmas drunkenness and stupor to, um, you know, be able to um, grasp and, and appreciate the, the most beautiful spiritual wisdoms uh, wisdom that is happening because um, when Saturn takes over in Capricorn we are we are shredding all of the um, the gross uh, scum of the year and we are handing it over to the, the, the Grim Reaper for, for him to transform us so Capricorn is Golgotha where we die and be transformed again and renewed because we have to constantly put away the flesh and kill the flesh <laughs> if we're not doing this repeatedly all the time we are not shredding the layers you know and getting deeper and deeper we are not getting rid of the grosser to um to um you know invite the sublimer so and that's what's happening on this table you know two years ago the message the message was quite different and it's getting uh, more and more uh it has more and more layers of perspective now you know deeper the higher the perspective you can you can you can have for instance if you if you don't get on the right perspective you will never find the treasures that you have uh the the glastonbury zodiac was discovered only in an airplane uh in the 20s and same with the nazca lines in peru with the invention of the aeroplane came these these finds and so because of the the change of perspective when you're on the ground you know you can't see the forest for trees but uh, when you get up and you have a different perspective this is why getting up into the higher mind back to Aries the cerebrum is so important because this is where the spirit is our our true spiritual uh, causal um um nature is the has its seat there whereas the feminine uh seat in the heart the soul is seated in the heart and these two become one this is the the, the lamb being married to the bride the bride is the uh, the spinal system you see king solomon had his girlfriend sheba sheba means seven she came from the south with all of her gifts well that's the spinal cord 18 inches long half a yard the yardstick that's the only yardstick that has ever been used in history the spinal column the spinal cord and um, it's the measuring stick the backyard in your back the yardstick and this is the temple and when you that's the bride and she is um, always connected to the land the can cerebrum I, can i add to that yep how many yards in a mile One, 1260 okay so yep. that totals up to nine which is consciousness and have a look at the phonics or listen rather my l <laughs> one my l equals nine in terms of yards and cubits of course 18 inches nine again right so uh <laughs> i'm santo keep rolling this is beautiful and if people aren't you aren't getting this tonight oh, i know you are i know you are uh yeah totally different perspective now we're just peeling layers and this is golden keep going yeah well this this is the temple of soul of man solomon which the you know the uh, average person is is not uh, seeing because they're looking for a literal man you see uh, Solomon as a, as a literal man and they don't realize that in their own uh, in this is why the Bible tells you what do you not know that your body is the temple of God and as above so below so when you come to know the ecliptic and all of its signs you will know exactly what's going on in theology and all of the um, so-called gospels, etc. They're all any wonder they're all devoted to the land. 
you know, the Ramayana, the goings of the Ram, Sri Ram, um, whether you go to the uh, Arabic Koran, the Book of the Ram, which would be the Islam. <laughs> so the opening words of the Quran, Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim, well, there's six times the Lamb of God is mentioned in those, in those two or three opening words of the Quran, which is the same with Bereshit bara Elohim. That's Each one of those words contains the Lamb of God three times. And Agni, in the Ramaya, in the uh, Rig Veda, the most the glorified of all the Eastern writings, the Rig Veda, um, opens with nine verses and each one uh, glorifying Agni. In fact, the very first word of the Rig Veda is Agni, the Lamb of God. Who is Agni? The firstborn of Brahma. Would that be Abraham, the Ram, the Father Ram, who art in heaven? Yes, it would. And so this is why you always have this story about a Ram who has another Ram as a son. You know, why does Brahma give birth to his firstborn and his name is Agni? Well, because when, when, when any atom or any cell, any organism in the universe wants to vibrate its light, i.e. electricity, it starts with Agni, the first form. Agni means ignite, igneous. And the ecliptic fires up at that balanced zero point on the 21st of March where the sun is on the equator and the sun has balanced the days now perfectly down the middle and you have 12 hours of darkness and light on each side, and you have the equinox, and you have the Lamb of God, and that is when the igneous Agni begins in his birth, right ascension of meridian. Ram. What, astro what astronomers called right ascension of meridian. And in fact, if you um, go to Google Sky, and you put in the coordinates for Sirius in Google Sky you will find that um, it will be, guess where? Well, around about six hours right ascension of meridian. Six hours ram. Everything is six hours or seven hours or up to 24 hours right ascension of meridian on the ecliptic. All the stars in the sky, they all bow down to the ram. This is why in Revelation it says that, that and, and all the 144,000 bowed down in, in, you know, in front of the Lamb of God. Well, because the 144,000 have to do with the 144 um, uh, moons or dodecatomorions around the ecliptic. You see, a dodecatomorion, when you get a sign of astrology, and, um, you know, Aries, for instance, which is 30 degrees along the ecliptic, all signs, are, uh, all uh, astrological signs are exactly 30 degrees, and there are 12 of them. But when you put a miniature zodiac inside each of those signs, that means there will be 12 um, zodiac inside of Aries. So each sign gets two and a half degrees that will make up 30 degrees of Aries, well then you have 12 times 12 of these. And these are the 12 times 12 that make up the 144,000. This is why, uh, you know, there's always 144,000 with the Lamb, right ascension of Meridian, on Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the ecliptic. <laughs> you know, and so uh, always you will find these uh, stars that um, have their place um, in, with respect to Aries, um, always, they will always be right ascension of meridian, you know, GMT in the sky. And uh, <clears throat> the wonderful Firmicus, Firmicus Maternus tells us uh, something really, really incredible about Aries, if I can find it just really quickly, because it just came to mind, and I'm trying to find the, um, the uh, quote in his book, but uh, just an amazing, powerful thing where he explained that all the stars, oh, here it is, 
In the chart of the universe, which we have said was invented by very learned men, invented, well, what he means is, you know, he's referring to Hermes primarily. Uh, in fact, I will give you the um, the beautiful list of the men. He, he's uh, referring to um, Petus Cyrus and Nechepso in Egypt, Asclepius, Hanubius, uh, where is Hermes? Does he mention Hermes here? Yeah, well, anyway, in another place he mentions um, that... Yeah, okay, there it is. To them, to them most powerful Mercury entrusted the secret. Well, Mercury's Hermes. So there it is, on page 71 of um, his book, Mathesios. Uh, to them... To Petosiris, Nechepso, Asclepius, and Hanubius, um, the most powerful Mercury entrusted the secret of astrology. Well, of course, because Mercury is the cerebrospinal system, and when we acquired the cerebro, the fully developed cerebrospinal system on the sixth day of creation, and and we became Adam Kadmon. Well, we got the antenna that is transmitting the messages from the God, a fully developed cerebrospinal system. So we should all be clairvoyant. There should be no excuse with people not understanding what I'm saying here. Um, we, this should be our language. Because if we've got a cerebrospinal system and a vagus nerve, etc., and seven chakras, we should be able to all do this talk. And so anyway, he goes on to say, in the chart of the universe which we have said was invented by very learned men, the MC, the medium Caelum, is found to be in Aries. This is because frequently, or rather, always, in all charts, the MC holds the principal place. And from this we deduce the, the basis of the whole chart, especially since most of the planets and the luminaries, the sun and the moon, send their influence toward this sign, well, hot diggity. Um, I think we need to pay attention with what I've just uh, mentioned, that the MC is really always Aries. Of course, because Aries is in the top of your head. And all the other signs from the feet, from the cerebellum Taurus down to the feet Pisces, they all have obey um, the, the, the I am, Aries, or the I will, Leo heart. You see, you're always directing your feet from your heart. If there's a sexy girl over there that you want to, you know, um, that in the in the in the party or a, a beautiful uh, girl that you want to uh, meet, you will will that with your heart. Vice versa, if there's a sexy man that um, or, or a beautiful man that you want to, you know, uh, uh, attract in your life, that will come from the two centres: the I am and the I will. You see. And the Scorpio, I desire, the sexual part, that should hopefully come, you know, <laughs> third in priority. But the other two centres should be, be where we love our friends the most from. That's where I love everybody from, <laughs> from the heart and from the mind, you know. That's why I don't mind if they don't respect me or don't, uh, you know, like me, because it's not about me. <laughs> it's about syncretism, and it's not about their uh, lower personality egos that they're hanging on to so much. You know, their commercial personalities, but just being hurt by Santos Bonacci. Oh no, who oh, he just used the word fuck and dick. Oh my my, you know, well, this is not politically correct. He will never he will never climb the ladder of career respect. Well, I well, and that's why I jumped out of school at the age of fifteen because yeah, like, fuck yeah. that. Yeah, we 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 chose to climb Jacob's ladder instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean you can't you can't script it any better. There's nothing no. that you can do that is wrong. <laughs> no, it's yeah. a perfect universe, and when people finally figure that out, they'll stop crying and whining and playing victim and blaming and doing all this other shit. Okay, uh, let me give you just a quick perspective. Okay, it's Friday night. There are bars all over right now here, because it's Friday night here, filled with people that are living in Scorpio only, haven't got a clue as to what <laughs> um, Aries and Leo are all about. 
uh, they're they're focused only on the Scorpio, <laughs> man and 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 woman, you know. So uh, there's a little bit of climbing there. Now here's a challenge to those at this table that are awake. How about you just one night go out and go into one of these places and have a look around just to see how far up Jacob's ladder you have gotten to. It will <laughs> melt your fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> put, put it this way, I cannot, absolutely will not, unless it's like my son's birthday party, will I go to anyone's restaurant out there to eat any of anyone else's food rather than my sprouts that I grow with love <laughs> and my own urine <laughs> in my house. You know, there's no way I'm going to be seduced to go and partake with anything in the world out there at all because they've, you know, really the 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 distance between the philosopher living and the dead lower egoic personalities types out there eating and drinking and buying and selling till the flood came and swept them all away. I, you know, there's no, um, you know, what friendship do Christ and Belial have? There's no friendship. And so, you know... None. Yeah, absolutely none. This is why folks better get on this table because you know, this is the only place where, where we are preaching to get out of Babylon the Great if you do not want to share with her in her sins. Um, you know, all the rest are preaching about how bad things are going and here's some, uh, you know, remedies in commerce. Uh, here's how to, you know... Um, you know, deal with this commercial problem, etc., etc., and um, you know they're still playing in the fiction and going to jail for it and uh, and suffering be- with their opinions because you know most people when they get syncretism and they hear astrotheology and astrology, you know these are these are words that um, stumble them. And of course, the scriptures say that even even though the righteous one should stumble seven times, he will pick himself up and keep walking, because there's no amount of times that you know the righteous one um, can uh, can overcome stumbling. But the fool, they get stumbled at the first rock. You know, it's too hard for them to. Uh, to uh, go past that first stumbling stone. Oh, he's into astrology, is he? Oh, well, that's from the devil. That's not empirical, that stuff. Uh, it's never been proven in a laboratory. Oh, oh yeah, that guy's just going to lead you astray to the devil. Um, well, you know, that's that's the that's the creep that is you know, following the path, the highway that is paved with beautiful intentions, you know, churchgoers and numbskulls. That's who, uh, that's who I'm trying to, um, that's my, my war is, is against, against that idiot there. And we've all carried and tolerated that idiot, that monkey on our backs for, you know, for a long time since we unfortunately were in, educated in this world. You know, I carried this idiot for decades, you know. Imagine me, Santos Bonacci, knocking on your door for 20 years um, as a Jehovah's Witness, telling you to uh, repent and join Jehovah's pedophile, Rockefeller-funded mind control organization so that you can be saved. You know, thank goodness that now I am, you know, I am who I am and that I'm uh, preaching forth the uh, the true message of of the ecliptic and how glorious it is, and so uh, yeah, let's rejoice that syncretism is back. Um, I've given syncretism to everybody in the world for free. You know they don't have to attribute it to me. Um, so you know whether whether people get stumbled or not, um, it's none of my business. It's um, you know they are being stumbled by their own egos, and uh, you eventually you have to climb up out of that and realise that we are all one, and that's why we say all of these nice things like um, Namaste and In Lakesh and all of these greetings because we are saying that I am you and you are me. This is how greetings come about. All greetings. Uh, salutations come from salt and salvation. Whether you say hello 
um, or hail, all these words, you know, pertain to salt. Um, all greetings are salutations, and all health is salubrious. So, you know, I know that my mind is healthy. My temple is healthy. Uh, it always is. I have never, ever suffered um, any kind of infirmity in this temple. And that's not because, you know, I'm, I'm really good at uh, doing... I'm not really good at doing, you know, my health things. I actually neglect most of the things. You know, some days I don't, you know, um, you know, even have a glass of my own urine, whereas other days I have ten. Uh, some days I forget to take my... Well, I don't... So I don't have a plan. I don't... I'm not regimented. I'm just... I'm free and I'm healthy and, and I am love and I am I am. So, you know, I... I could probably get on a regimen. Uh, my brothers, are, uh, both of my brothers, are, are weight built, you know, bodybuilders, and they've got just gorgeous bodies. And you know, I could easily, you know, look after that in a vain way. Uh, I don't mind looking good. I've I've done that before, where I've toned up my muscles and and I've got plenty of muscles and 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 all of that. But um, you know, I would rather uh, develop and um, build up the the anagogical since, you know, I'm well suited to it and I've got a chance to do that, you know, a conjunction of Mercury, Jupiter and uh, and Sun. <laughs> I definitely pick that. But, uh, and placed it in the seventh house, which is a house of, uh, of deep spirituality, the second most spiritual angle um, to to the ninth house, which is the house of spirituality. So um, all that's in order, and what you see is what you get. So um, we really uh, should be quite thankful, thankful for this table, and what we should be doing is making sure that uh, we make copies of these files and stick it under everybody's noses and pester them with it until such time as they realize that there's only one true way to be king and priest unto oneself, and that is to know who you are. And this is where, you know, we get that day in and day out. Know thyself is what we are about on this table. And what are we? We are light. We are conscious light. We are identical to God. There is no separation. There is only immortality. There is only omniscience and omnipresence and omnipotence. That's the God I worship. What about uh, you? You know, I and I'm and I'm uh, calling out to churchgoers here mainly. <laughs> you know. If, if they're going to accuse me of being a Satanist or whatever else they concoct in their feeble minds, well, I have sided with omniscience and omnipotence and omnipresence and omnimortal, immortal, the four arms. That's who I'm siding with. And I vibrate with that entity every day. I live and and meditate inside of that creature, and uh, you know. So I I uh, reject the Julio Gorian Jesus Christ Anno Domini Anal Domination calendar. You know, I deny Jesus Christ. Uh, I deny the crown because. Because these are these are demons. Jesus Christ is, is not a nice little, uh, um, you know, calendar, and uh, Anno Domini is is not anything worth of any value. It's intellectual property owned by the pedophile Roman elite, probably the Orsini family who own everything else. And, uh, you know, the clans, sure, they change their names and they find themselves as Guelphs and Rockefellers and Borgia and Sforza and all of this, but you can rest assured that they're all one big pedophile inbred family of creeps uh, who need to be dealt with. And I'm here to do the job. Well, I'm taking, <laughs> I've am taking taken care of the House of Guelph, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I've got the Borgia family covered, the founders of the Jesuits, yeah, together well, with the Farnese. 
Yeah, well, the Guelphs, uh, that's the royal family uh, of England. That's their real family name. And, of course, the royal city, Guelph, you know, uh, and that's where uh, the judge bowed. So um, I look at the allegories, uh, and that was, uh, the for me, that was the moment, because it's now, we're bringing it here now, of crown bowing. Out. See ya. Bye-bye. No more literals, no more, well, what happened, Kate? What? You're missing it. Oh, my God, are you missing it? I'm no longer at effect to it. I, That is something I caused, and I, when I bring it up, it's my cause brought up again to show you in, in the now that that's what happened. <laughs> and, uh, man, it, it is... It, <sighs> I have no. It's so hard to even try to explain this. When people can see it, they're going. And I know there's a lot of you out there uh, at this table that are, that are. You know exactly what I'm saying. I don't need to say it. And isn't it funny that more and more um, <laughs> I'm picking up, and others are picking up too. Thought waves and thought patterns that uh, it, it's. It's 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 really getting magical, and I'm really happy that I finally got to celebrate my first crucifixion and resurrection properly, right? And I don't mean uh, the words in the normal definition because it's only my intent that counts in there because I can shred those upside down and backwards. So it is the concept of the 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 ye must be born again. So there we go. Those that came through the the happy crucifixion. Know oh, exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, and by the way, uh, uh, that's the that's the sound of the boat that's saying we're ready to sail, uh, all aboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so you know, this how lucky the uh, the criminals are that they have we, um, you know, to administer the justice that. Uh, that they deserve, you know. I'm I'm reaching out to people like, say, the Lord Mayor of Melbourne, uh, Robert Doyle, and uh, Jeff Chettle, bar member, traitor to humanity, traitor to human beings by swearing allegiance to the bar. Um, you know, I'm reaching out to these guys. Uh, you know, what you need to do now is, you know, take a few steps. For instance, you need to consider retirement. You need to consider repentance. You need to consider perhaps, um, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, you might want to sit down and have a talk with uh, someone like myself because we're going to eventually be uh, be, uh, taking over as the good little anarchists we are and teaching all of humanity how to be free from your pedophile gangs and, you know, your rates and notices and all that people trafficking going on with the little name. So you, you eventually you will have to come to the table of Santos Bonacci, uh, Chettle and um, Doyle. So, you know, um, sooner would be better because you're getting more and more famous every single day. And lucky you are that it's me that's going to bring you down. You're very, 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 very lucky because I have never, ever injured or hurt another soul in my life, and probably in past lives, who knows? Uh, but um, but you have, and you are doing it right now, and I've proven it. And so, how lucky they are, Kate! Uh, you know, now is the time, and creeps like Dolazal to need to um, stop profiting from other people, profiting from other people, and making money or getting energy of any kind from other people's work is piggybacking and you are a pimp so you know dollars are you're going to go to jail and you will be known as a pimp in jail and you're not going to be treated nicely by the other <laughs> that that's pimp. where you that's where you become a pimp l pimple right <laughs> that's where you get mm-hmm. to experience all sorts of different kinds of getting squeezed and popped i'm just you know hey just letting you know <laughs> and, and the table's open it's open 24 7 yeah, and so what we're going to do with Bobby Boys, we're going to talk about getting the fluoride out of Melbourne's water, and we're going to stop those uh, planes that uh, are chemtrailing the uh, Melbourne skies. There have been many of them, but the next one that comes down, me and Robbie, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set up some um, some uh, some of the uh, military equipment and bomb it out of the sky. 
But first of all, of course, we will let them know through the uh, Rothschild's own Channel 7, Channel 9 and Channel 10 uh, moron stations that uh, only dickheads watch here in Melbourne. You see, we get Channel 10. These are free-to-air stations. These are, these are full of pedophile. These, I don't know, Murdoch the pedophile, probably uh, the other pedophile here. Who's the richest... Uh, uh, cunt here in this country, um, whatever he, you know. I don't want to call him Dick because that's the male. Um, well, it's, yeah, it's, it's in the name anyway. Mur, uh, as in Mars. Doc. Yeah. You know, so yep. Murdoch. Uh, pay attention to the phonics, guys, and and this yeah, is how, Murdoch. Yeah, you can, Murdoch. Yeah, you can spot your enemies real quick. <laughs> you, you can spot these guys. <laughs> yeah, we know him as a dumb kill fuck. That's that's how you can uh, call his name rather than Murdoch. Uh, dumb killer fuck. Because that's all he—that's all he does, you know. And uh, his little pedophile empire here—they run Channel Nine, and they spew vomit about how they're going to keep screwing you up the ass by uh, accessing your legal name. And you can rest assured that the Murdochs and um, and all of these uh, pedophile names here in Australia—John Howard's one of them. He—he was—he was, uh, he was uh, uh, absolutely a dick and a fuck. I know someone who. Um, I have a friend who was a super soldier here in Australia, in Melbourne, and uh, he's now a sovereign. And he told me that he used to, um, he was trained by the Japanese, uh, the um, Yakuza, an elite branch of the killing um, uh, Yakuza in Japan. And he's, uh, he was uh, mind controlled by them. And he remembers that in an underground um, fight one day because see the elites that you know this boxing and all of this stuff that happens above ground in the public well they've got their own uh, little underground stuff where they actually kill to the death and he saw one day he saw John Howard at the Australian Prime Minister who in 96 uh, stole all of Australia's um, guns off them by staging Port Arthur and murdering 36 Australians Martin Bryant of course is innocent uh, but John Howard was behind that to steal away the freedom for the pedophile Rothschilds who owned this country and the Windsors and the Murdochs and the Packers. That's the other name. Yeah, Channel 9, Packer, another dick and another uh, arsewipe and his dynasty of arsewipes that live in Sydney. I'm going after them all. They're all going to jail. Um, they, they spew forth on their channels, you know, Channel 9 and Channel 7, that, uh, you know, just go along as you are, people. Just continue in your stock and trades and um, keep going to work and, and using our money from the, Fed, uh, from the Reserve Bank. They call it the Reserve Bank here in Australia. It doesn't have any reserves and it's not a bank. It's just, a, uh, uh, again, the same criminal families. And um, I'm going to bust this so, so big, I'm going to tear them a brand new arsehole, I'll tell you what. And um, there's, there's not a um, obelisk or a fact uh, big enough to um, represent how big I'm going to tear them a new one um, if they don't stop and repent and get the message out on Channel 9, Channel 10 and Channel 7 that um, we have all been screwed in a involuntary slave system of Rome through the birth certificates whereby everybody has had their wealth stripped off them, including those pensioners that are starving to death right now in this city, Melbourne, the most livable city. You know what? You know the police go around and hassle them now? If they haven't paid a traffic fine or they haven't paid their last bill, the police now... Uh, 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 you know, squat teams are going around to grandmas now. Um, you know what I mean? They, they, they're so sick and desperate. That's why I produced um, my um, YouTube video about Emiliano Mandarino. Because I'm going to stop these motherfuckers in their tracks. You know, they have no right to harvest the energy of any other individual. And if anything, they should be giving them the glory and them the money. Um, you know, so... Uh, as I do with everything that I present in my presentations. All the, uh, the references um, are duly, um, you know, duly made known and so that each one can have their glory and, and we can show how it is that we stand on the soldiers of great illumined beings of the past. 
Syncretism was. It was around for thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. It's only been this very, very short J chapter of history that all of that has changed. Since monotheism visited this planet, you know, the, 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 the three biggies, um, you know, Islam, uh, Judaism, Christianity, they have, they have um, hijacked and co-opted the science, these beautiful sciences, and uh, inverted them. So that we have a world full of uh, killers now. Oh, they're very zealous and they love their, their Muhammad and they love their Jesus, uh, so much so that it will actually shed blood. And when you shed blood, um, you know, when you shed blood wantonly and you don't repent from that, uh, in the afterlife, uh, all you will experience is a, is a major big pain in the neck or, or like a, pain, a, a headache or a toothache. The, the, the agony um, is, is the same as the agony that some people, um, like return veterans that have lost a limb, for instance, you know, they've had their legs blown off, they can still feel the etheric leg and they still feel the pain of it and carry it. Well, that is exactly the pain that you will carry in the afterlife once you lose the body, once you lose these gross atoms. So if you're experiencing pain now, I would address it now. You know, in my body there is no pain. I don't tolerate it. And, and if, if it comes, I send, you know, the proper mental energy to dissipate it. And I only allow beautiful light forms to enter my body. And so, you know, nice, nicely compressed sound waves are bathing my body. So every day I will go out and do earthing and solar gazing and, and all of the alkal alkaline stuff that I do. And so, um, yeah. That's, yeah, that's just, just want to toss a note there for uh, anyone listening that still might be involved in churchianity, which I, at this table I highly doubt. But it, uh, maybe pass this on to your Christian, so, uh, so-called Christian friends. Ask them this question. Uh, who is the most quoted individual in the Quran? Most quoted prophet, <laughs> Jesus. So again, tell me how much uh, uh, Christians are supposed to hate Muslims when uh, Jesus is quoted more in the Quran than the Bible itself. Hmm, makes you kind of wonder, doesn't it? I just thought I'd share that. Yeah, because as I've shown, you know, it's all about the ecliptic. Uh, the Quran, at least, is. Um, more um, genuine than the scriptures because the Quran actually mentions the 12 zodiacal signs, Aries through Pisces by name in two places and it mentions the seven heavens that God created, uh, the seven planetary bodies, visible bodies of the solar system. And so at least it's honest about this and it acknowledges that Saturn is, um, you know, Saturn is at the top and this is why um, Saturn, Saturn Day is such a holy day, you know, that rest happens on Saturday and people go to the beach and relax and then there's Saturday night, you know, and Saturday night fever and all of this liberation. Saturn is the great liberator. It's his sacred day and this is why Jews, you know, um, acknowledge this day, but not only Jews, so do the lower castes, um, you know, as... The Reverend Robert Taylor puts it, the, um, the Israelites and the Christians below the Jews and the Hebrews and the Telestoi above the Jews. So, you know, we're all on Jacob's ladder somewhere along the line there and we're all advancing. But the one that is advancing is the ram on the ecliptic, right ascension meridian. And so when you always start with Aries, you, you, can, you always know how to read the ecliptic, Aries has three deacons. We must study the deacons. What are the deacons of Aries? Perseus. Well, Perseus has got Medusa's head in his, ha in his hand. Well, what does that mean? Well, Perseus is Prometheus, you see. His sword is the fire of intellect. And it cuts off the lower nature and the arguing and the infernal arguments that come from uh, opinion. And he cuts off the medulla oblongata at the palms and therefore, he, he is saying that um, he is the light of the world and he cuts off the starlit night of darkness, Medusa. 
and next to him is Cassiopeia, the Queen of Heavens. Well, you've got to get to Perseus and Cassiopeia. And then next to them is Cetus the fish, and he's got the band of Pisces in his mouth. So he's tying Adam Cadmon from Aries through Pisces. Cetus's job is to, to um, keep Jacob's heel attached to the head. You know, Jacob came out with the, a scarlet thread attached to his hand, uh, 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 his foot. Of course, because Pisces has the band, and that band is connected to Aries, so the feet are connected to the head, and so um, they are bound in, in, a, in a, an eternal cycle of necessity. And so Cetus is the whale that swallows Jonah, and who swallows Hercules. Because if we are swallowed in Aries, you see, we are swallowed into the, into the, um, the higher water, because this is where the waters of the cerebrospinal fluids are. Cetus is the sea monster. And, and the sea, sea in Egypt is, is water. But, but we know that everything comes from water. It's all water. Everything is water. And this is why all the letters in the, 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 the capital letters in the alphabet, A, M, N, V, and W, all symbolize the waves of water. A is aqua, ether, and um, air. So it's water, air, and ether. Um, w is water. M is marine, maritime. N is nautical. V is vapor, air or water. And so you see that in the alphabet too, the patterns of the elements are there. And that's why the alphabet starting at A in Aries and ending in Z, Zeus, Pisces, the ruler of Pisces, is quite appropriate. Because the alphabet is on the ecliptic and it is through speech that all things are created. Through Horus, the vocal cords. And so, abracadabra along the ecliptic, I've shown in my syncretism presentations, um, which are my, my best presentations, I think, because they expose the Abrahamic religion to be the abra, um, the, the four abra signs, um, Aries, uh, Cancer, Libra, and Cabracorn. Um, these are all the abracadabra on the ecliptic, because they are the four portals and they open to the seasons, and they create the seasons as the sun goes along the ecliptic. Hence, the ram, Aries, is Abram, Abra. The, the scarab, Cancer, is the scarab, Abra. That's an anagram for Abra. Libra is an anagram for Abra. And Cap Capricorn is an anagram for Abra. And so, Abracadabra is on the ecliptic. And every element that claims to exist in the universe, which really does not have any existence in the real planes, um, has an ecliptic and vibrates according to polarity, positive and negative, and must begin at zero point in Aries and must finish in Pisces. And all thoughts do this. Everything that is thought, everything that is known, starts at Aries, ignites, because everything is ignited by fire, the generator. Nothing happens without fire. Nothing is generated without fire. And everything returns back to the fire, and then gets transformed and transmuted, and sublim sublimated to return back to its pure essence. You can't, you can't get more kindergarten than that. That's really just... Um, you know, this, should, this stuff should be taught to three-year-old, four-year-old kids. In fact, I do quite easily, and they love it. No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> you know, that's the funny thing is, that, I mean, w when you really start to know what's going on, uh, the, well, the first question that you're probably going to ask yourself is, how the hell did I miss that, and how the hell did I buy into the other stuff? Now you're starting to see the power of the program. 
and why so many people are out right now partying their brains out, having a great old time, uh, you know, uh, hanging out with Dionysus, getting drunk and uh, partying, <laughs> just like Selenus, and you're going to pass out in Midas' yard and whatever, and then you're going to start the cycle all over again. <sighs> you know, and it is. It's so very, very simple. Um, and it, it, it doesn't take brilliance. If anything, it takes a lack of brilliance to see this. You've got to get simple on this stuff. Uh, that's why I have such a hard time with uh, intellectual types, because they're they're intellectual. They they don't get it. They have to figure it out. It's 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 like these scientists trying to prove the the existence of God by trying to find a, a physical particle, which is the effect. They got it backwards, you know. That's why anyone that is going after the the whole Atlantean uh, free energy, this and all the rest of it, are missing out on their God nature. Uh, sorry, God doesn't need uh, doesn't need a uh, a generator. God is a generator. That's what you are. Um, so it really is a paradigm shift in how we think and how we look at things. So, and this is all I ever ask people to do: dare to have a look at it differently. Um, you know, I, one of my favorite things to do, and I had a chance to do it today, was to show how the world is spinning in two directions at the same time. And I was able to use a ball, a real, you know, it was a football. What are the odds? Let's go lateral on this one, right? Uh, to show to show this effect. And uh, that's a major aha moment for people. Because the minute you say the Earth is turning two directions at the same time, people look at you with a head tilt. And I'm thinking, whoa. Uh, by the way, if you do want to go out to that bar some night, <laughs> here's, here's a quick way to make money. <laughs> it's very easy. All you got to do uh, is get the, get the visual. You can use anything that's round and start turning it counterclockwise as you look down on it. And then... Uh, turn in the same direction and get them to look from the underside up and it's turning clockwise. So that is singularity. We get caught up in the duality part of it. And uh, and it's so easy to show people. And when they get it, it, that opens up a whole new channel of thinking. Because all of a sudden you've just dispelled the whole duality nature of the universe for them. It takes a bit of work after that to really see it. And this is one of the reasons why the programs run so deep. You know, it's it's like uh, take your typical mayor or your typical cop or typical system dog. Uh, they're not working at jobs. They're running programs. They're running a predetermined program that they step into, and they're told what they're expected to do in that program. It's not a job. It's a program. That's why jobs are so deadly to people because all they're do there's no creativity. And, and once you learn the job, what else is left? The grind. You know how how many how long does it take to learn uh, to cook a burger and flip it? Now do that for twenty years. How long does it take to do one particular thing? I, I don't care what job you're doing, and I mean that uh, as a general contractor, my job was varied and uh, covered all aspects of, of of building, construction, reno, new, whatever the case may be, at all levels. You know, from the roof on down, every every uh, facet of it. But I'll tell you. It's boring. It really is. <laughs> it's way more fun playing guitar because you get actually get to you know get outside the box and be creative. You know. Yeah, music is one of the um, the most uh, intricate and complicate uh, sciences to learn if you if you want to if you really really want to go uh, deep. You know, I did all my trivium. Uh, music when I was when I was young you know I, I graphed out the all the harmonics the sixths and the thirds and taught myself to read music and um, compositions etc etc and uh, did all that stuff and I'm glad you know I did that because well I don't I kind of refer to it now but uh, usually I just uh, play how I feel and uh, by ear and, and whatnot but um, uh, you know when you have a daily relationship with music, which is what I have, um, you know, you're always engaging and balancing the two hemispheres of the uh, yeah, the the brain and the cere the cerebrum, and you are, you know, balancing in the corpus callosum. It is the the true and and finest way to. Um, you know, to unite the two hemispheres, music and harmony, 
And this is why there's always, um, you know, they sing praises and hymns to the Lord, uh, churchgoers and, and, and so forth, but they don't realize what they're doing. What they're doing is they're really just resonating with the Creator, who is sound. Uh, but of course, they want, uh, they still want their monotheistic, um, patriarchal God, because that's how they've been sodomized. Uh, unfortunately, you know, they've been brutalized in such a way. Any, any um, attendance to any of these so-called Christian churches will, uh, you know, reveal that quickly. You, you won't, you won't be in there for more than five minutes. You'll pick up the abuse. Uh, and the pedof the air of pedophilia in there, the mind control spirit that's in there immediately, you know, because there's always eyes willing to judge you, looking down at you in in any church, you know, whether it's the pastor or whether it's the um, the ignoramuses who think they're better than you there, um, you know. But there's always peering eyes. Well, that's how it's been designed. It's it's designed that way so that you, you know everybody can be checked. So that the king has got all these churches in place, and you know whether they be you know uh, Church of England or Jehovah's Witness or Mormon, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to the Rothschilds. They fund them all. You know that is a known fact that they fund them all. Um, so that all they care about is that the idiots in there are waiting for God to come and save them, and in the meantime they need to pay taxes to the government. And so you know <laughs> the elite are just smoking. Smoking Cubans and um, you know having cocktail parties and uh, drinking the best champagne, thinking, well, it's worked so far. It's uh, it's a formula that works. Just give them churches, bread and circuses, and uh, tell them that they've got to pay a different new new tax every day. And they'll argue and squabble a bit amongst themselves, but uh, you know they'll bend over and say, um, you know, ask for a, a, a bigger phallic. And the elite know it. Yeah, isn't it interesting that you mentioned the word hymns, right? Uh, uh, I believe it, I know it's uh, polyhymnia is uh, one of the nine muses, and polyhymnia is the goddess of sacred song. So here, here they are walking into church, and where are they going? <laughs> they're, they're going to their hymn books, <laughs> and they don't even know that it's actually a, a, a goddess. Uh, that's where that word comes from. Polyhymnia. It's just, it's 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 mind blowing. Yeah, it should be um, uh, go to sing hers, not hymns. Well, again, hymn uh, is uh, Hebrew. It's it's feminine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's 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 crazy. Yep. Everything's backwards. There you, here. Go. you know, so and of course, it's a goddess. Hymn, polyhymnia. Uh, it's a goddess, not a god. You know, so. Yep. Um, Everything's backwards here. I'm just a clue, you know. <laughs> like seriously, it's it, it it gets crazier when you really start to see it. Then you that that's the point where you start to laugh and you start to look in the mirror and go, "Oh man, did I fall for it or what?" That's why for me, it's not a because here's the thing. I know the golden rule is in full force and effect. I don't have to do a damn thing. All I got to do is go. Yeah, I get it. And now we move lateral on the timeline into that into that timeline. Instead of being stuck in the linear, we're moving out of that linear as it was already created into another, because we have infinite parallel realities in the now, into a different timeline. And uh, I know what's coming. <laughs> this is the thing. Once you understand how this works, you you, you breathe a huge sigh of relief, sigh, spirit, <laughs> Spirit, you know, relief, and uh, because I, you don't believe anymore, you know, and it, it, there, when you get to the no stage, there's no doubt. There's absolutely no doubt, and uh, that is for me the zero point. That is the the Aries. That is the Ram, you know. Um, and that was why I asked you about the the Air, uh, Aries Midheaven. Uh, just so I can get a better gauge on my own game plan, because my my zodiac is is my game plan. That's I'm, I'm what you're teaching me and so many is how to read that map. I mean, this is cartography of the highest order, as far as I'm concerned. So I, I'm looking at all these different things, and and you know I've pulled in uh, the Mayan, the Chinese, uh, and the Western zodiacs. All I look at them all to see how they are relevant to me, and each and every one, because it's all the same fractal, same story, told me what I needed to know from a different perspective. 
And I just chose to look. And, and of course, religion doesn't want you looking at anything. You know, woe betide you if you tell some Christian going into, into church on Sunday morning that the hymnal that they're singing from is from a Greek goddess of sacred song, one of the nine muses, Polyemna. Yeah, good luck if you're trying to help the church goers to understand anything that comes out of your mouth. I mean, they, you know, apart from the the, the great spiritual um, insights that we have, uh, you know, I mean, really, how are they going to understand any of this sacred language? It's just pure sacred language, but um, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I said it last night, too. I, I don't know how many times I've pissed my sister off by telling her, listen, the difference between you and me is I, I'm just choosing to do what Jesus told told us to do. And, and uh, you know, and, and lo and behold, everything that Jesus did was against the system that got him crucified. And <laughs> what part of that story did you all miss? You know? So it, and and how can any Christian argue that? I said, I'm just trying to do what the guy was teaching. You know, you can you, you can take him as your savior. It's not what he wanted. That's not what he told you. What he's telling you is you got to grow up. You know, you got to put away the childish things. You got to stand, and you're going to go through your own crucifixion. And I tell you, um, you can put it off. It's like uh, I describe it like this. Um, you know, you got dishes in the sink. Every minute that goes by, the pile mentally grows until you finally get up and go, i got to do these dishes. And you go and do the dishes, and then, and then they're done. And uh, lo and behold, it's like it wasn't that big a deal. It It is the mere thought. And that's what happens. We keep thinking and thinking and thinking and creating all these scripts and what ifs and, well, what if not? Well, what happens if a cop pulls you over? Well, what happens if they don't? Why don't you just decide to be where you're going instead of scripting all this garbage in between and put on the cloak of invisibility? Put on the, the, the truth armor of invincibility. This is what it means to stand in the truth. And I know there's a lot of people out there that just can't believe that because you're still stuck in the believing. I'm talking from the perspective of doing, having walked through, been crucified, on the other side going, fuck, <laughs> yeah, it's real. I don't believe it anymore. I know it. And that's the difference. And I'll tell you, here's the thing that I have the beautiful balance of. Regardless of what I encounter in my walk, I am meant to. I have a completely different mindset to deal with anything and everything now. You know, I, I think it's safe to say I'm probably one of the last people on this planet that the system wants any of their uneducated goons to come in anywhere near I'm the last one they want to give an open door to. They're, they're closing them. They don't want me in their rooms. Well, they're going to they're, they're gonna have to, you see, but it's going to be an unlawful side of things. And they're not going to like me too much, right? Because all the crimes that I'm listing out are, are going to be reported to the police, all the different police forces, and they're not going to do a fucking thing. I know that because they're scared shitless, every one of them. But I'll tell you, it doesn't matter to me because I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to put my seed into the belly of the beast. I'm putting my Jack and the Beanstalk bean in their belly and watch that stalk rip both the fucking giant's heads off. This is what it means to do that. You know, and don't wait for me, guys. Are you looking for a fucking savior? You know, don't wait for me. I've got my own game going on. I'm going to go. I think I, I think it was Simon had went up to Jesus and was troubled, and Jesus was uh, at the time troubled, and Simon was going up to ask, you know, yet again another fucking mitten string question, and and I'll do a loose translation of the King, of the King James of this encounter, you know, where Simon went up and said, Yo, geez, bro, I've got this blah blah blah. blah. Jesus basically turns to him and says, You know what, Simon? Fuck off, man. I got my own problems. Go and take care of it yourself. And that's what you got to learn to do. Now, I put the King James into the most literal translation you will ever hear, because I make it real. I want you to get what was being said there. If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. Okay, if you're doing something that makes you feel guilty and you hate yourself and you're harming others, stop fucking doing it. Is it clear? You're, you are the only one that can look in the mirror and decide these things. And the joy of having people like Santo around is Santo can show you how to read your road map so that it's not a blind walk down the alley waiting for something to club you with all the, the fears. And, the, and Listen, fear 
is is an illusion. Yeah, it's a danger. I love going back to the After Earth movie. Danger is real, but fear, fear is insanity because you're scripting shit based on past experiences or other people's stories. Most of these things are not your own experiences. One of the reasons why I laugh at this whole free man, sovereign citizen, all the rest of the shit movements is because they haven't got a concept of script writing. And they haven't got any experience. Most of these people are coming in looking for help from others. Granted, absolutely, so did I. But I also, at the same time, said, well, you know, I, I've got something going on with me that only applies to me, so I'm going to take care of that. And I'm going to work my way through it, and I'm hopefully going to find some truths and some, some clues as to how to do this, because it just didn't feel right. And I, and I knew that if I looked, I would find something. And I did. And I just kept following that road. I kept walking that road. And I went through my own crucifixion. I mean, it was absolute uh, on, on December 21st, because I had in my mind that I, w that I was looking at all the things that I went through to crucify me. And could I let all of those things go? Yes, I had to. You cannot be a real live child, Pinocchio, if you've still got strings attached. That's the message of the Pinocchio story. If you've still got strings, they're emotional attachments. If you have anger, fear, greed, lust... Any of these negative emotions regarding any situation in your life, you are emotionally attached, Pinocchio. And there's no easy way to put this to anyone. This is just the way it is. I know because I had shit piles of strings that I had to cut. I had some serious, serious let goes. I went through the mill. You can listen back to uh, two summers ago. I was a fucking mess. Go ahead, listen. I have been able to chronicle my whole step. This is the joy of doing what I do because you get to, if, if you have the time, it's going to take you a few months to get, like if you listen solid all day, every day, it's going to take you months to get through all my shows. But I'll tell you, you do that and you're going to see the, the genesis to revelation me. That's your journey. You are walking genesis to revelation. What part of the book are you in? Most of these people are still stuck in Sodom and fucking Gomorrah. <laughs> okay? So gauge where you are. You can look at the Zodiac and see what you need to fix. I love the Zodiac. You've got your 12 disciplines, right? And you've got mirrors of them. Like, uh, prime example, Taurus and Scorpio. It's all about the I have, I want, I have, I want. You've got some shit to sort out. And when you, I'll tell you, the Taurians and the, and the Scorpios that sort that shit out, powerful beings. If they can't sort it out, they're a fucking mess. You know? Uh, look at the Capricorn Cancer. There, There's the I experience I feel. So you've got to do the mirror of that. Well, I don't need to experience it. I, I, I don't feel. So you've got to bring the quads together. Uh, Gemini to Sagittarius. I think I see. I think I see. Well, how about this? I don't think I see. Or how about I think I see not? Right? So you've got to put both sides in the positive, both sides in the negative, and work it together. Um, uh, Aries to Libra. I am, I balance. <laughs> I am not, I'm not balanced. Okay? So these are the, the clues that, that I look at, and these are the gifts that Santo has brought to the table. And uh, I tell you, I mean, I, I, I'm spoiled because I've, I've had <laughs> the ears of some incredible beings where I can converse, and this is the joy of having Santo here. This is why, at, and you know this, Santo, this table is completely unfettered. There are no strings on this Pinocchio. You speak oh. your heart and your mind. Oh, is... yeah. Well, I wouldn't be here. No, I, I know that. Neither would I. Not, not in the mood I am lately, no way, and escalating it. Uh, I, would, I would not tolerate. Uh, so uh, I'm, I hope... Uh, I hope that uh, we can have this platform and people uh, look after um, the people who are running it for us because um, it's absolutely the best place to be for sure. How about we do some charts then? Uh, I've got uh, Olive. Is that Olive, is it? Um, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's Actually, uh, we're going to do Olives here, but let me um, grab my mouse here. Uh, I just, I've got a couple of callers on the board that have been patiently waiting. I know Mike's on the board. I've got his mic open already. If you want to jump in and say hi, Mike, before we get rolling on this. Uh, let me just get my mouse going here. That would be good. 
Uh, okay, Mike's there. I've got. I just want to bring people in so that they know they're here. We've got Mike. You there, Mike? Yeah. How the Helios are you? Hey, fucking a. <laughs> uh, I know we've got Ingrid in the call. She already said hi. Hi, Ingrid. How are you? She's probably playing with the puppies. No biggie. Aren't you really funny? I was just saying, oh, I better make sure my mic doesn't accidentally unmute. And then you go, hi, how are you? <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah, I know. Isn't it great? So, uh, my, uh, Mike there? Yes, he is. Hi, Mike. Hello. I heard him. Good, good. All right. So, so yeah. we got we got Mike squared tonight. That's good. Area code 727. That's Susie. Hello. Susie, how are you? You want to say Hi. Yeah, hi Santos, hi uh, Kate. Hi. Love the show. Taking yeah, we have, notes. Yeah, we have fun here. <laughs> we have lots of fun here. All right, we got uh, <laughs> Die herself. I'm gonna bring everybody in, and then Santos is gonna do the start doing the chart. So I just want to get everybody on the board. Uh, Die, how are ya? I'm good, darling. How are you? Awesome. <laughs> Can uh, you tell? I- I, yes, I can. I'm going to have to re-listen to this one because it's like mind is stretching, stretching. I know. You uh, get, get, get the close <laughs> around here some I night. Yeah. I had a quick question for Santos, if I might, before he gets started Please. with the charts. Um, does he have an update, my brother, on your Syncrota wheel, when that will be available? Um, <laughs> I don't know what's happened to the guy who's uploading it for me he's in the middle of it now he's in england um but I, he disappeared for a month uh i don't know he's but uh he came, he mentioned three days ago that he's back on it and the graphs will be up soon um but look you know if you if you want um the sync rotor and any other graphs just um let me know <laughs> It's quite easy. Just click on one of the DV, buy one of the DVDs on my page, and um, let me give me a list of the things you want. And send them over to you because the Sync Rotor will be. Uh, I think the big version will be about twenty-five bucks and uh, fifteen for the smaller one, which you can use on your computer, and then probably I don't know five or ten dollars per per other graphics, which you know are really really <clears throat> good and useful graphics, but. I think I might even do a um, a presentation soon explaining how to use how to use the sync rotor. In fact, I will oh, bless because you. it's a <laughs> yep, it's a very very valuable tool. It's a wonderful tool. <clears throat> yeah, it comes in handy to know thyself and know thine enemies. You see, this is why this this tool is just as powerful to look at others around you. That's why I'm always, what's your sign? Oh, yeah, do you know when you were born? <laughs> click, 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 click. I just want to see what's going on, right? So, but there you go. Yeah, it's, a, you know, it, it's the Zodiac and learning all about it uh, is one of the, well, one of the most powerful tools uh, to find your yellow brick road and you, you'll see everything that resonates in you. It's all yeah. there. So, and we got, uh, looks like we got Boston in the call tonight. Boston, are you there? <laughs> hey, Brandon, how are you? Hi, guys. <laughs> um, I just wrote a whole bunch of notes on the cult of Saturn and how Santos had Troy McLuhan on, and he was talking about the galactic golden age, the priesthood of the silver age of the cult of Saturn, and I drew an apple, which is how <laughs> time works. Ian Batista Vico and James Joyce and Tolkien we're all onto this sort of thing. And then you just blew it out of the water with your poetic, art, you know, artistic flowing on music. And I just sat back and just put the pencil down and just basked in the... I'm so blessed to be around you. you know, yeah, spiritual you know, orgasms, but, aren't they great? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just like this small little inner circle of people that, um, you know, that just know this sort of syncretism, which is the... Science. It's a holistic science, you know. It integrates everything. It integrates everything, uh, you know. And it's just beautiful when you, you, Kate, as an objective observer of Santos, can actually like elaborate on it and put it into like a different context. But your own, you know, have your own thing. It's just a, 
Yeah. Well, I, 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 yeah. It's uh, again, it's about building houses and painting them, and we just you know, we we texture it differently. You know, I'm, I'm listening and looking uh, from a completely different uh, perspective than Santo, of course, because you know it wouldn't make a lot of sense to have the same two pieces. But isn't it neat to watch the two pieces as they uh, have been connected and interact? That's yes. that's it's what like we're trying to show spot. here. Yeah. Find find your piece of the puzzle and see how you fit. Oh, sorry, Brandon. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just saying it's just like beautifully woven music. You know, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's it's just great to hear. Yeah, we jam so one. Just <laughs> relaxing. Yeah, we can sit in the jam room. <laughs> Someday. Right All on. Right. And I'm going to do a shout out right now for everybody. We got 17 minutes till we roll over, and then you can uh, kick into reading uh, Olaf's chart there, Santo. Uh, we got 17 minutes. If you want to jump into the call here to listen past the hour, uh, you'll have to call in at 661 467 2401. And of course, you can Skype in uh, on the Blog Talk page. All you have to do is click the Skype button if you see it there. Uh, if it's not there, uh, just refresh the page, click on that, and that will bring you to the board. Once you're at the board and you want to jump in the call, all you have to do is hit one on the phone and, of course, open the dial pad in Skype and hit one there, and that lets me know that you want to, you know, question, comment, uh, jump in. Um, you know, Shills know that one, too, so it's, I'm, I'm really glad that uh, at least they're paying attention. Uh, so I know they have brain cells. It's all good. And we're here to help guys stop selling to the whore. Seriously. It's only going to cost you, oh, your soul? Ooh, hundred bucks an hour, Soul Infinity. Um, good trade, eh? I don't think so. But a great thank you to Paul Giovanni and the crew at CriticalMassRadio.co.uk. Uh, without this table, guys, Critical Mass would not have been achieved. And we're already talking. I'm, I've been talking about it in past for a while because we've reached the critical mass, uh, and it's so self-evident every single day um, with. Truth piling on truth on uh, piling on truth, and I'm watching the system just buckle at every turn. Uh, it's forcing the hand of honor, and that's what we're doing. That's what we do best at this table, and we get pretty rambunctious about it too. So uh, I guarantee you won't have any uh, radio like this anymore. I promise. Um, so that being said, if uh, any anyone can help criti- at criticalmassradio.co.uk, we have a donate and a subscription button. Greatly appreciated. Uh, more importantly, of course, this applies to all of us. Just get the intention out there that uh, the table floats and it's gorgeous. And uh, that's where I live and uh, works for me. That being said, Santo, it's all yours. Yep. <laughs> okay, so we've got Olive. And Olive is... Uh, so, if anyone uh, following the 30th of September 35, born... Near to 6 p.m. in Saigon, Vietnam. Okay, so 30th of September 1975. 6 p.m. Saigon. Been to Saigon to uh, Ho Chi Minh City, and um, she'll um, Olive will remember, um, will know um, Pham Mu Lao. I stayed on Pham Mu Lao. <laughs> All right, uh, here we've got a chart now. This is Olive, so, okay. Uh, what was the date? 25th of September, Libra, yeah. All right, here we've got a chart, a night chart, which is going to... Um, first thing I notice is the conjunction of Saturn and Moon in the fourth house. That is going to be uh, a troublesome one, really. You, you don't want, the, you know... Saturn near anywhere near the moon really or well near anything <laughs> you don't want Saturn conjunct anything really um, but uh, near the moon is uh, uh, the moon is the mother so this will probably I'll just mention a few things here and see what um, resonates here but this usually is um, troubles with sicknesses for the native and the mother. Um, it also is um, fear, a lot of fear. Um, this conjunction, Saturn Moon, causes, um, it attacks all thoughts. So your thinking is attacked, and, and usually it's fear. So these, this is the negative, I'm bringing the negative side out, you know, um, as, as you would, so that you can... Um, 
you know, jump on these things and, and correct them, really. But uh, that's the negative uh, I saw there with that conjunction in the fourth house, and the fourth house is the home. So probably uh, would take that energy outside of the home and go into a park, you know, go, in, go outdoors if there's a park near, near the home um, because you probably have uh, more peaceful thoughts in a park than you would at home. So, and also the, um, the, the, the maternal inheritance is lost. So there's no inheritance coming from mother when Saturn is conjunct the moon. Uh, and of course it's a night chart which makes this a little bit more prominent. In, if it was a day chart, because Saturn is a day planet, that would have been alleviated, but it's more aggressive in your chart there, Olive. So, but but you've got a very powerful, um, very po powerful chart because your ascendant is. Am I still on? Yeah, yeah, you're still there. Uh, all good, all good. Okay, your ascendant is in Aries, and your MC is in Capricorn. Your DC is in Libra, and your IC is in Cancer. This is a cardinal angular sign. So you're a real go-getter, I, I think. I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of Mars. Mars is obviously the ruler of your chart because you've got an Aries ascendant, but you also have Jupiter in Aries. Now that is fantastic because Jupiter gets three points because he is the ruler of the triplicity of fire and by night. Then, hence, you have a night chart, a nocturnal chart, so Jupiter gets three points of essential dignity, and he is, he is in the first house and the first sign, Aries of the Ascendant. So this is you coming along as a very jovial person and very generous, but slightly in trouble because, you know, Jupiter's retrograding number one, not good. Well, not good for Jupiter because if he's, you know, if he's free of retrograde, he, he, he's charging more on the ecliptic. He's, he's going swift, you know, he's going direct and um, he's got better energy coming your way in your chart. But what it means is, you know, um, sure, you still get to have Jupiter in the first house, and you still have those qualities, very jovial and kind and generous, but probably, you know, you won't be appreciated for that. Probably you won't be um, uh, allowed to express that in every circumstance because there's always an obstacle or a hindrance. So that's, the, that's how you see retrogrades, really. Um, but uh, that guarantees you a very, very fiery, fiery um, focus point in life. Your, your ascendant is where you focus your sun and your moon. So your sun is in Libra and your moon is in Leo, the heart, with Saturn in there also and, and Venus. So the love is in the heart, yes, but you've got this you know, affliction there of moon and Saturn conjunct. My little niece, Lily, she has this conjunction, and oh, you can just see it. <laughs> she's, um, <laughs> yeah, she's quite a, um, yeah, anxiety and fear can creep in with this conjunction, and it also can, um, can afflict the thoughts. So, you'll, only you will know what this means. But anyway, uh, so having the angles in cardinal signs gives you a lot of force. These, these um, angles, the, the cardinal signs, Aries, Capricorn, Libra and Cancer, they have the most force of all the signs. You know, they have at least 50% of the force in, in, along the ecliptic. Whereas the next signs, the fixed signs, they, you know, they get about 10, uh, you know, they get about... Uh, say, 35%, 40%, and then the mutable signs are the weakest in terms of force. They're neutral. You know, they're so neutral that they don't really... 
they're not about force. So, but the cardinal signs um, have to do with um, with motion and beginning things. So, I, I guess you would be a good person to inspire others and motivate others and start things and and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, beginning things. Uh, Aries in the Ascendant. I just want to check that before I move on. I think that's about all, unless you've got any questions, Olive. But Aries in the Ascendant. When the Ascendant is in Aries, this has a great predictive force for early youth. It denies the possibility of brothers, or out of many brothers, it preserves only one. So that's the nasty with Aries Ascendant. Um, it tends to uh, you know, bring you into... Uh, you know, as the only child of the of the household, or you know, older older brothers have been um, have died in the family, or stillborns, or things like that, because Aries is the head; he wants to be first in everything. You know, it's a very aggressive sign. So this is where a lot of your aggression is coming from. You know, <laughs> um, it's very martial. So you can be very combative. You know, if you want to be. It denies the possibility of... Uh, also, it weakens the native himself with pain or disease. His reputation is threatened. His paternal inheritance is at once, one time dissipated and again restored. To some, the native will appear as a protector because of his excessive generosity. Well, there you go. Uh, but to others, his lashiv lashivness will be displeasing. His help will be given to ungrateful recipients. Life experience for him will be changeable and he will be he will contend with constant headaches. Yeah, Aries ascendants uh, cause cause headaches. But uh again, that point that I made before, excessive generosity. Well, you've got Mr Mr generous Jupiter in Aries. And so both the Aries Ascendant and Jupiter are all about excessive generosity, you see. But um, most probably that won't be appreciated since you've got, uh, you know, um, well, Jupiter is badly aspected. Now, in your seventh house, you've got some weird stuff happening too. Uranus and Mercury, that's got to be really interesting in your relationships. Wow. Wow. Um, Uranus can be altruistic on the good side, Mercury communicative and um, intellectual. So all of that's part of the relationships there. But I don't know. I think they're they're probably too um, too mercurial and too ethereal to be in the seventh house for to, for you to have. You know. Um, I don't know uh, uh, if you want if you were looking for for a um, conventional or, or a stable relationship. You're probably getting some really, really bohemian, um, eccentric um, relationships, really, or you're probably providing them. So, and I would watch out for the Sun and Pluto in the sixth house. The sixth house is the house of illness. Uh, yeah, you can check other things to confirm the, um, the illness. Unless you've got any specific questions there, the sync rotor has all the degrees of illnesses on it. But uh, sun in um, the sixth house, well, the sixth house also has to do with um, people that uh, in your place of employment that are under you and subject to you. So having the sun there with Pluto, conjunct Pluto, I think that's a bit sort of aggressive. I think you would probably be a hard taskmaster as an employee. You know, I mean, the people under you would probably be uh, <laughs> pushed a bit. I don't know. You know, maybe or you, maybe you're doing it because you want them to work better um, and transform themselves and 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 produce more or but you're very I guess you're probably very um I hope I'm wrong but you know militaristic in in the place of work cuz the 6th house is is dealing with that it's also dealing with pets and how you treat your pets 
and what kind of pets you would have. But mostly it's the house of illness and um, the um, people under you in employment, slaves, what they, you know, what the Romans would have called slaves. Slaves are basically just people who have contracted to do work for you for a set amount of time, and then when that time expires, you're off to go. That was how um, it used to work, but then, of course, that's going to be abused, isn't it? Yeah, I, just, it, I, I want to jump on the word Roman for people just so they get an idea. If you're involved with the Whore of Babylon, you're in uh, Roman civil law. That's Phoenician law. And the word Roman is simply this, Roma, which is which is a spirit breath of creation, and uh, Eta, which is the god uh, letter in uh, lowercase, uh, H, Ita in the Greek alphabet, which is the seventh letter God. So what you're saying is if you're part of, of, of the Roman civil system, uh, the claim of your spiritual creation is taken through the spirit breath, mother of creation, mine, and of course God, complete. So that's what, you've, that's what you're giving up. So just be mindful. And for all those that think they can do the spiritual things and all the rest of it, uh, sorry, no you can't, because uh, until you break this contract, uh, and I talk in at all levels, uh, and by your actions, you were known. Uh, 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 so you know you got to play this game properly, right? Um, all is fair in love and war. Um, if you have any spiritual contracts whatsoever, and think, well, I'm just going to go along with it because it's part of the, uh, you know, it's a different intent to say, listen, I need to do this because I absolutely have to get here and there. But when it's just a willy nilly thing, and and you don't pay it any attention, you are in the deepest spiritual contract in this universe with this whore of Babylon. If you play with her, simple. Just wanted to let you know what being a Roma is all about. Hey Santos, doesn't Greek also mean slave? Because I have a lot of um, Greeks, and they're like, we're not Greek. We're they use the uh, the the true word for um, people from Greece, which is what Hellas. Yeah, Hellas. Yeah, uh, oh. Eleni. Um, well, um, yeah, Elava. When you go to Greece, you go Stine Elava. You go to you go to. Elava, the, the, the land of Helen. Yeah, Greek, I mean, have a look at it, you know, Greece. Um, I always, even when I was a kid, I thought, well, is it because they're greasy? And, you know, hungry, is it because they're hungry? Um, you, know, I, you know, I always thought to myself, these, these are Roman, the Romans are very, very cheeky mofos, you know, when they went annexing and conquering uh, the world, you know, but... The Slavic people mean the slaves. You know, that's what it means. And, and because Rome went, went into, into the Baltic countries to, to um, acquire slaves. And they still, these days, you know, the Slavonic and the Slavic people call themselves that. I'd lose that. Yeah. You know, Slovenia. Yeah, what, what part of slave I see aren't they getting? <laughs> Slavic? Yeah. Slave I see, yeah, of course. Yeah, you know... Um, this is what the Bosnians, Bosnians and the Croatians understood well. They were they were truly sovereign. That's what the Bosnian War was all about. You know, the Vatican had to change rulership there. That's that's all it was. It was just bloodshed again by the Vatican. You know, the corporate elite, and um, you know they didn't want um, they want slaves. And when they go around naming countries, you know. Um, they, you know, for instance, Spain is the Hebrew land of Iberia. <laughs> it's not Spain, you know. Um, uh, and I think that has a negative connotation too. But most of these lands. But the thing is, you see, uh, the whole the whole system is functioning as a false idol it's it was created that way and it, it's a distraction it always has been rome has been murdering for thousands of years and pillaging and um for the purpose of enslaving us through the birth certificate etc and so the that contract and all the intent that goes that goes into it both from our side and from their side, theirs is ob obviously full of evil intent. They um, constructed this whole system of, you know, the, con 
the donation of Constantine, Unum Sanctum, the, the Sesquic Cave Trust. They did all of this to defraud mankind, you see. And they, they're not shy about being arrogant about it. You know, they stick their phallics, their temples and their banks in the best prominent places in all the cities. They are the, and guess what? Everybody goes to these temples to work in them from, from the suburbs. You know, they all go into, they're all directed into the city. You know, Melbourne's got an amazing um, freeway system, probably, you know, second only to Los Angeles. But um, you can hop on the Monash Freeway here. It's only one minute away from my house. And, you, and it's, you know, 30 minutes. I used to travel on it every day that I went to the Burke Street Mall to bask. It was 30 minutes and I was parked in, in Little Burke Street from my house. 30 minutes on that freeway and it's about 45 kilometres away. So, and, and, and they've done this and what happens is if you get caught in traffic, you can be on that Monash freeway for about two hours, you know, from six o'clock. So you get all these mothers scratching their heads, leaving their babies with, you know, uh, I don't know, pedophile aunties and, and uh, you know, n places, nurseries where they're just uh, <laughs> abusive or whatever. And they're drinking their coffee and, and smoking in their cars two hours to get to, to work. And where are they going? They're going to the mountain of, of the Ram of Mars, the Hill of Mars, where all of the martial maritime activity is going on in the hubs of all the cities. And the biggest buildings are the banks and the churches and the, the wealthiest. And it's still the same business that's going on. We've got to say goodbye to that and destroy it. Destroy its energy through better knowledge forms. And we are creating this knowledge form right here on this channel. The knowledge form that, that, that humanity needs, whether they are aware of, aware of it or not, is this knowledge form that will destroy all the other thought forms so that when idiots like Barack Obama open their eyes, it will be like a, a gorilla farting in the wind and people would just laugh at it. And they go, look at that, there's a dumbass gorilla and he's just farting out of his mouth. You know, when George Bush speaks, people will be throwing, you know, uh, rotten eggs. They won't be paying $800 to go and eat with this um, uh, base vampire. Murderer. Uh, and, yeah. And so um, this is what we are doing. We are rejecting all of this. And I'll tell you what, Olive has got a really good chart for that. Um, she's got all the explosive energy she needs. She's got plenty of love in with Venus in the fifth house. She's going to be a great mother. Um, probably won't have many children, though, because fire ascendants, um, one or two children at most. Um, you need a water ascendant if you wanted to capitalise on Venus in the, um, in the fifth house there. But, wow, you know, you will be such a loving, loving mother. And... Um, with the with Leo in the fifth cusp there, the heart and Venus in Leo in the fifth house. That's also dealing with pleasure. So you are you are a person, an individual rather, who um, who does get a lot of pleasure from life. And I would say that that would be, you know, sensual too. You know, but on all levels, you'd be getting a lot of pleasure. There you go. There you go. Uh, now, there was uh, Lori from last week. Um, I, I uh, got the information for you. Um, uh, she sent you an email and uh, me a text as well. It's in your one-on-one -on -one with me Skype. And she's in the call right now as well. I might as well get her mic open. And uh, we also have Terry in the call uh, if you want to do his right after that. So I'll just let, let you know I'm trying to cue you up here. And we've got other callers in here too. I haven't got their mics open yet. I will shortly. Uh, so just bear with me, guys. Um, now just let me get... Uh, do you see the information? Yeah, yeah, but I've got someone else. Oh, okay, call, okay. And All right, I'm yep. trying to find who it was. Dang, oh, no. Pulled up someone's chart. It's um, someone that must have been born in in is a Scorpio around about the nineteenth to the twenty first of Scorpio. This is right on the cusp of Scorpio and Sagittarius, and they were born around six o'clock. Let me just check that. 
where I've got that. Okay, but I, I just uh, keeping you up to date with what I've received. So I think that would be me. Yes, yeah, Susie. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. There you go. Susie's yes, already in the call. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, let's do Susie. Okay, okay. this is the one. Yeah. It's 112060, 459 yep, yep. p.m., yep, yep. Garden City, Michigan. Yes. Yep. yep. Done, done, done. Um, now, here the sun is still above the horizon, so it's a day chart. means you'll get a lot out of your Jupiter and... Um, Saturn and Mercury, just as well. That's beautiful. So, but uh, you've got Saturn there in the ninth house. Well, that's all about spirituality, okay? And um, Saturn is the master. He is the crown chakra, okay? So the crown chakra, and he's also in Capricorn. So you've got five points of essential dignity there for Capricorn, uh, Saturn in Capricorn. That really stands out, that one. There's... Um, there's got to be some really good stuff happening there. Saturn in the ninth house will make famous magicians, renowned philosophers or temple priests noted for their reputation for magic. According to the nature of the signs, he also makes seers, diviners and astrologers. These are always outstanding in their responses. Some carry on the rites of temples or are in charge of rituals. Sometimes they become long-haired philosophers or interpreters of dreams. Now, now Saturn by night in that house is totally opposite. You know, by night it indicates the wrath of the gods and hatred of emperors, especially if the waning moon is moving toward him. Yeah, so it's totally different. You see, so it's great that you've got Saturn there in Capricorn. Um, well, wow, you should be able to tell us some interesting things about your spiritual side. Um, it would be very, very deep and magical. You've got the, the gifts there if you want to um, activate them, unless you're aware of that. Great seers and diviners. So you've got um, everything you need for that skill there. And being all the activity in the eighth house, you are certainly... That's the house of death and transformation and inheritances, things like that. It also is a house that is concerned with law and justice and lawsuits. So, you know, that's probably anyone who has activity in the eighth house. I, I see a lot of people who are sovereigns and, um, you know, and uh, law minded people that have got stuff going on in there. You've got the benefics. Venus and Jupiter. Now that needs to be um, pointed out that you have a conjunction of Venus and Jupiter. That is so beautiful a thing to have. Um, let me read what Firmicus says. It's just a, a magnificent conjunction. And um, you also have a very interesting conjunction of uh, Neptune and Mercury. So your speech, this is your speech, Mercury, your mouth, what comes from your tongue and your communication. You, ver you, you have a very inspirational and sharp intellect. How I know is because Mercury is far advanced of the sun and rising first, but conjunct Neptune. So Neptune is the Holy Spirit, inspiration, the holy dove. So there's your um, communication and intellect inspirational um, and being placed in the deep sign of watery Scorpio this gives it an added power that's the powerhouse Scorpio is the powerhouse sign of astrology all all creation happens there remember Scorpio is um, pointing to the tail of Scorpio is pointing to the center of the Milky Way galaxy opposite is Taurus, where Orion is. And Orion is, especially the Orion Nebula and the belt of Orion and all of that area, that is where the Word of God is. That is another creative center. It's a spiritual creative center. You know, um, and this axis of Taurus and Scorpio is the powerhouse axis in the um, ecliptic. 
that is where the galactic plane is. They they are both straddling the galactic plane, and so there's more. There, there's so much strength in these uh, fixed signs. It's uh, it's very 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 powerful. And so the Mercury and Neptune is. I think it's really really. Um, you, you, it's an unusual gift that you must have in communication. I want, I'd love for you to share what it's given to you because you would know better than. Um, anyone else what this conjunction of Mercury and Neptune has done for you and how you know it helps you in your life but um, you'll get a lot of goodness from the Jupiter and Venus conjunction because those are the two benefics and they are very very powerful in your chart because they are in the eighth house which is the house of transformation so your information powerhouse, Jupiter and Venus together in the same degree or in the same sign indicate the highest position and great personal charm. Yeah, you sound like a charming person. Um, the natives are always associated in true friendship with great and good men. They are always known for good character and devout in religion, religious rites. They will have great physical attractiveness and be joined in close friendship to kings and judges. They will always have good reputation and will attain high position and possessions through the protection of powerful women. A happy and prosperous marriage is also predicted for those who have Jupiter and Venus in conjunction. They will have children unless a malefic planet prevents. But they are always driven by depraved desires to a series of love affairs. These same predictions are made by Jupiter and Venus in a woman's chart. But if Jupiter and Venus are in conjunction in fixed signs, no, this is a cardinal sign Capricorn, um, favourably aspected to the moon and Mars from any direction is in a fa unfavourable aspect, the relatives are subjects, objects of scandal. Well, this doesn't apply to you, but... Um, there you go. That's the sort of things that can can occur with that conjunction. Uh, Mars retrograding in Cancer in the third house. That has got to be trouble for you and your brothers and sisters. I don't see that you could be getting along um, just superficially here with any of your brothers and sisters. There must be an aggressive energy there. Either your brothers are aggressive towards you or you are aggressive toward your brothers but I can do further checks to see whether it's your older your middle or your younger brothers and that's about it really mm, there's a little bit of probably uh, a tinge of sadness with the sun there just about to set you were born as the sun was setting that does bring you know a, an introvert sort of a sad streak into the natives. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. That was, now, yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, what can you tell us about the Mercury-Neptune conjunction, Susie? Well, um, Mercury is the vocal cords, correct? The voice, mm, yep. communication? Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I believe what it would reference, as I've, I'm noticing as I've gotten older, I have the ability to uh, know something through osmosis. And uh, when someone tells me something, it's as if I absorb it and then I can reword it or reframe it in a kind of like a logical sense. And all I'm doing is, uh, saying what they said to me, but I'm saying it back with my words in an example. And but it seems to shed light uh, more uh, more deeply. And the other thing that I have is when I hear someone speaking, I hear what they mean, not the words that they say. The, the intonation. There's something in there that I can, I recognize. Do you, yeah, do you well, understand what I'm saying? Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Well, well, um, you've got to remember that 
your thinking and intellect and communication is very Neptunian. Neptune is uh, Osiris, the um, the god of um, water. That's Shiva. Can be very destructive. Can be an absolute malefic. But because um, this conjunction is purely benefic because of all the um, the sex styles that are pointed toward toward it. Notice that there's no um, uh, squares or oppositions. You only have one opposition in your chart and one square. All the rest is a bunch of um, trines and sextiles, and they're all pointing to this Neptune um, Mercury conjunction, which uh, makes it purely, purely benefic. So your communication is always, um, you know, it's it's always accompanied with Neptunian depth about it. You know. Um, it's always dressed, if you like, with Neptune's profound, inspirational um, energy. Um, and if it's, if it's in the sixth house, that has to do with, um, first and foremost, with people that you work with. So people that are un under you in terms of um, they need to look up to you for instruction or direction in the place of work. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to look up other things too that it might be so that you can direct this energy in the right way. Uh, the sixth house also deal according to Bonatti, on page 105 of his book um, on basic astrology, on the sixth house it says there, and they said the sixth house is that of in of infirmity and in male and female slaves, and it is said. It is said this house is that of illnesses on account of the fact that it is outside the house of games and delights, which is the fifth, and goes toward the seventh, which is the house of public enemies. And al Kabizi said it signifies whatever is going to be before old age, and it signifies the end of life. And al Dawla said that it signifies servants and beasts which are not ridden. Sixth house, yeah, again, that's what I said. It, would, it has to do with uh, um, servants and it has to do with animals or pets. Um, and the sixth house signifies vassals and justices. And it signifies change from place to place. And Sal said the sixth house is cadence from the ascendant. Nor does it aspect it and it is a malign place. Well, it is a malign place. The 6th and the 12th houses, you don't really want planets in them. You know, um, it, you know they're, they're full of hidden, um, hidden things, uh, hidden troubles that occur in life. And, uh, and El Al Andazaga said, the first lord of the triplicity of the 6th house signifies infirmities and convalescences from them, and from evils. The second one signifies domestics and slaves. The third signifies what he will find because of the use and works. Yeah, you're picking up a little bit, Santo, and I had to mute you just because you're get, uh, on some times on phones there's a, an echo feedback loop, so uh, yeah, try that again, Santo. You, you were breaking up a little bit. I would like to read that um, to signify mostly it signifies infirmities. Uh, how do you help? Yeah, it's, it's really, really breaking up. Um, got the infirmities thing. Try again. Okay. That's better. Well, no, I can. I can move on. I've um, I've exhausted that avenue. Uh, now I'm just going to do one more part that I've got on my Skype. Okay, well, I just opened Susie if you want to say anything to Santo before he moves on. Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to listen to the repeat and study some more. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I always uh, thought about that one conjunct because it was so unusual, the two. The, was it the Jupiter in the, hey, got... not the Mercury and Neptune, the Jupiter in the Venus conjunction? 
Oh, anyway, yeah, that one's thank a goodie. you so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've got you've got a great conjunction of uh, Venus and Jupiter. Yeah, those two conjunctions, Neptune, Mercury, and Venus and Jupiter, they are very, very special in your chart, sister. Very, very special. You are also a Bohemian at heart. You are um, a very eccentric uh, way of expressing your heart with Uranus in Leo. Now, uh, I've got one more to do here. Yeah. Let me see. Where are we? Oh, here we go. Um, oh no, I just did. I just did, Susie. Yeah, that was you from you're on my Skype. You're called um, Koitus Erratic. Yeah, I think is it's that co- you, sir? Yeah, co- uh, Coyote. Coyote Spirit. Spirit. Oh yeah, Coyote yeah. Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, is that Sue, is it? Is that yeah. Sue on there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I just did Sue. So, all right, well, then I've got... Um, I can do the one you want me to do there, the second one, Philip. Yep. Is that Philip? Yeah, and we had Laurie as well, but if you've got time for one, Philip, I know, has been asking for months. All righty and there's a uh, page, and there's Terry as well. So I just I'm letting you know. Uh, I just want to let people know that we do our best here. And, and uh, while you're looking that up, I've got calling in the call. Just, uh, uh, just I know she <laughs> words, Colleen. Colleen, are you there? Hi, Kate. There you are. Can you hear me? Hi. I'm yeah. I'm I'm listening. Beautiful call tonight. I just yeah, wanted to say. I, go ahead. Oh, I just um, I was wanted to say it's just really interesting uh, when Santos uh, does the charts, <laughs> how sometimes he starts out and, <laughs> and it's like. You're hearing like, whoa, you know, this doesn't look too good. But then later, um, some of the aspects and the different um, planets in this house or this ascendant and um, things look up. Or he starts out with, um, wow, this chart is looks really good. And then later brings in some of the... Um, if you want to call it the negative aspects. So um, I've been thinking off and on how, um, you know, we can't, it's almost like you could use astrology as a lot of other things where you feel like you're better than someone. Well, my house is in this, or my planet is in this house, or my ascendant is this. And um, you can you can hear that and see that um, off and on on the show or on Facebook, and um, I just feel maybe that's something else we really need to be aware of that we all have really great um, positive aspects and maybe um, you know I, I don't like using the word negative, but I'm not I don't remember what things to work on. Yes, yes. Things to work on. Um, I like to remind everyone that I'm a Gemini. It doesn't matter. That's just my that's my game plan as to how I figure out the other 11 zodiacs and how they work with me. So I have to figure out the other 11. You, you've got a gimme. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a mulligan, okay? Uh, so no one sign is greater than any other. Uh, these are yeah. all different roadmaps, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, sure, I've got Leo Ascendant and uh, Aries Midheaven. I also got some other shit in there that needs sorting out, you know. Uh, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, but that's what I'm focused we all on. Do. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what I like to focus on. I, I like to know what are the tools that I have to work on the shit that I need to take care of. That's yeah. how I look at it, yeah. It's not about, oh, look at me, I'm this and that. No, no, no. Yeah. So I made myself I totally get what on, you're saying. on my thoughts there. Okay, good. And oh, yeah, absolutely. Can, no, I, I get it. Yeah. And another thing, Santos I, uh, just said something about in in the chart, not the last one, but the one before, um, 
about uh, pets. Something in the chart, it showed how someone would be with pets. Is, did, do you remember that? Santos, do you remember yes, what you said yes, about um, that? Okay. Yep, absolutely. Yep. The I've not heard you house, say that before. The sixth before. house Maybe has to do have. with pets. And okay. The sixth Probably house. not. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. No, I haven't heard that. Twelfth so house. So my thought about the... Go ahead, Santos. Uh, don't worry. No, that's fine, sister. We've got serious duplexing here. That's why we're, we're jumping on each other's uh, phrases. But uh, okay. keep going. Okay. Keep going. Well, my thought when you said that was, I wonder if in the charts there would be something to indicate those of us that are vegetarians, something in our charts. Wouldn't that be interesting? Uh, yes, there would. There would be. Uh, there there are indications. Um, mm -hmm. they, they are varied and diverse, and you've got to be really, really skilled to be able to uh, point out. Put it this way, if, if there's a heavy tendency toward the more animalistic kinds, um, these excite the animalistic natures, you know. Aries, for instance, is uh, one of the aggressive um, uh, animal signs, you know. The canine is there, and so is the uh, belligerent ram. It's a, it's a belligerent uh, sign, fire, you know. Uh, Leo, yeah. too, the passions of the heart, you, you see, the, the fiery signs. Um, and then the earthy signs also have to do with lust. Taurus is Venetian, the mouth, you know, uh, gluttony. Oh, I want to eat and stuff myself. Uh, Scorpio has to do with Falcon, in the generative area. And, and you know, so yeah. each sign manifests, uh, you know, but, but these animal signs in particular that I mentioned, Scorpio, Taurus, uh, Capricorn, Aries, um, Leo, these ones, you know, if you've got more stuff uh, in, in them and bad conjunctions in them, uh, this in indicates, um, you know, an unbalanced energy in that animalistic nature that we have. Mm -hmm. So, but you, you find that um, yeah, people who have got you know, Aquarius Ascendant or Midheaven and Gemini this and Libra that, the, the, the human main signs, or they've got a lot of stuff going on there, um, they tend to be more spiritual and more, more simple, hence, you know, not so much attached to uh, the, sens the, the powerful sensation that you get from the body when you eat the flesh of another being. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's basically something that only... Only satisfies the senses; it cannot satisfy the mind. So, if there's a lot of mind in the chart, and you see that those mind signs are in right houses, for instance, um, you know you would you would need to find the, that uh, those mind signs are in the AC or, or the SC number one, or in the ninth house, which is a, a spiritual house, or the eleventh house, and things like that. So, yeah, you can find all that in the chart, for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, I look forward to the Pink Rota. All right, I'm just going to bring a couple more people in so we can... Thank uh, you, Santos. I just want to get everybody on the board. Oh, Colleen, thank you. Great questions. Yeah. Uh, just, just uh, Guys, I'm going to open your mic. We don't have a lot of time here. We've got half an hour. So uh, just questions and comments, because Santos got another chart to do. I just want to make sure everyone gets in the call. So uh, what do we got? Oh, I was clicking on the gun. She's gone. Okay, 903. Okay. 903? Hello, yeah, Dave. there you are. Hey. Yeah. I've been uh, listening to or looking at the chat room here, and there was a question that came up that somebody wanted you to answer if you could. Yeah, I'll deal with uh, Yeah, this is Santos night. I'll deal with that one tomorrow night. I, I was going to post in the room. I just haven't had a chance, but it's regarding the death certificate and doing that and the other. I'll uh, I'll address that in great detail tomorrow. All right, very good. Fair enough. It's a good. It's a great yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. I, I really couldn't give it a, a honest answer without you know stretching. So I'm not going to do that. Well, let's say all system, things system things horror. Uh, you've got to get it in your head. 
right? So that to me is another a physical effect game, and I'll 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 bust that apart tomorrow night just to show people how to look. At it. By all means, again, now that the concept's there, what is it? It's a with God, we've got it, and that's already done. Uh, God doesn't put a whole lot of effort into physical things, right? It's all thought, mental, universal. Um, yeah, so I'll bust that down because if I talk to a couple of people, um, again, the, the the instant you think you've won, <laughs> have you really? Right, you still that. So it's a, it's a great question. So I'll I'll, I'll tackle that one tomorrow. All remind, right. So remind me. Right, I've got uh, two other callers quickly here. Uh, so Kath Love, question, comment, just uh, jump in, say hi. Hi. Um, thank you both for for what you're doing. We've been listening for a while. Um, I thought I could get in there and maybe get a chart read, but uh, I, under, I, I understand there are people that have been waiting a long time. So I will just sit back and listen. But I'm enjoying your shows and I'm learning so much. And thank you. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, and you know what? It's always a luck of the draw. And as things uh, pan out, everything is perfect. So just pay attention for the things. Um, Horoscopeswithin.com is it, Santo? Yes, yes. Follow along there. Yeah. If you, I, what I would suggest is get your own chart in there and have a look at it. So see things that are collating, uh, they apply to you. So uh, this and this is how you get to learn to read your chart by listening to someone else's chart. It's like uh, bingo under the B, you know, seven kind of thing. So, but uh, yeah, yeah, so I would go ahead. Talk I to would to get the most to get the most out of these shows um, where I do charts. Uh, I would have yours present at all times, uh, you know, and I've got mine printed uh, and it's all over the place I can open up the back of a book and I'll have my chart in there because I did that on purpose you know I stuck it everywhere so that I would know who I am um, but you, you know you can do that on, on the on the computer so you have your chart there so you know where all your planets are and you can follow along with the reading that I do individually so, so now we're going to do uh, Philip and he, he has uh, birthday is 4th of September uh, 1991 Seven, uh, 19.30. The time is 19.30, so 7.30 p.m. Springfield, Massachusetts, Hamden. Okay, so this is Philip now. Uh, here we have what I noticed first and foremost is the moon in Cancer, five points, essential dignity, and uh, Saturn in Aquarius, which is also um, very strong because that is also his house. But he doesn't get five points because he's retrograding, so he loses five points. So you've got a flat um, satin there in the house of friends. So I'd be looking at that. That's an interesting thing going on there. You've got some, um, probably some, having the north node in the 11th house indicates great blessings in terms of friends. But I probably imagine you are not very kind to them sometimes or a bit stern with them, a bit harsh, nasty, cold maybe, don't communicate very much with them uh, because Saturn retrograding up there is uh, by night. You have a night chart. The sun is just below the uh, um, the horizon. So we, we're dealing with an effect here. I just want to see Saturn in the 11th house, what Firmicus says, moderately good. Good fortune is the indication of Saturn in the 11th house. When important promotion is destined for the native, the same after his 30th year. Before the year, perception until after the 30th year. Well, uh, that's not much. It's not telling much about how you're going to be treating friends. Uh, I consult another book, which I will. Uh, Saturn. Let's have a look at Saturn. Okay. And just let everybody know, I'm going to mute the mics out because I've got a bit of hiss and background noise. So uh, and Santos reading charts anyway. So I'm just going to mute you guys out. Don't take it personal. It's just, it's just a bit noisy on this end. Right, Saturn. Let's have a look at Saturn. What's he doing in the eleventh house? Saturn in the 11th house, well aspected, give friends among the aged and wealthy who will be of benefit to the person in helping him to realize his hopes, wishes and ambitions. When Saturn is afflicted, he, he should be um, he should be beware of seeking friends older than himself. 
they will always endeavor to make use of him for personal ends and desert him when he is no longer of use to them. Okay, so watch out for older friends there. That's the point. You know, Saturn retrograding in the 11th house, he is actually receiving a square from the moon. So he's not very, very happy. So you've got a grumpy disposition there somehow towards old friends or, I don't know, maybe you know, trouble coming from that area. Um, Uranus and Neptune also in the 10th house indicate you really need to be when it comes to uh, choice of um, career path, I think, you know, because <laughs> both Uranus and uh, Neptune retrograding in the 10th house in Capricorn, you know, suggest that you need to <laughs> probably find your own way when it comes to career because you will be very rebellious and too... Um, if, uh, in your workplace, you know, to, to harness any of your energy. I, uh, or maybe, you know, you will be, if you are in the workplace, you will be such a, an inventive, original person. You know, you, you'd be an asset if the if the boss knows how to handle you, but uh, otherwise you'd be a real handful there. Uh, Mars in the seventh house is a little bit too aggressive for you to have any kind of um, smooth, kind of relationship too too aggressive there brother uh mars libra in particular mars not like libra it is in um in its fall there mars falls in libra uh whereas no no rather rather it's it's um, sun falls in libra mars is in detriment in libra so Mars is in detriment in Libra. So this brings detriment to your the house of relationships and marriages, okay? And also accidents and uh, hindrances, uh, all that sort of stuff. Let me read. But the good thing about it is it's a night chart, so it's not so harmful to you. A night chart, Mars loves a night chart. Uh, but the harmful part is that Mars is in Libra. It's not like... And watch out for the um, Cardinal Grand Cross that's turning up on the 1st of January in a few days. Mars will be in Libra, squaring and opposing with all the other cardinal signs. And eight planets are going to be involved in this conjunction. It's going to be a very, very powerful day. But uh, remember that Mars will be in Libra. And so you will see what it means to have Mars in Libra. Um, it's it's about balance and justice and and all of those things. So Mars in the seventh house. Uh, now Mars in the seventh house that is on the descendant by night or day makes for a violent death according to the nature of the times. He indicates this evil more strongly in alien signs. For then he predicts pains, lacerations of the body from a fall or death. Or he has the native thrown into prison or condemns him to deadly misfortune. In nocturnal charts, Mars indicates painful, painful fevers from all kinds of activities. Often he indicates wounds and becomes that become infected so that they have to be cauterized by a hot iron. He also he produces hidden pains in the body, especially if he himself is the ruler of time or if he shares the rulership of time with the full moon. Well, the, I can tell you now that if you, the ruler of time, Mars will be the second ruler of time in your chart. So if you are going to have pain, it will be in the earlier part of your days. It'll be from the age of 10 to 21, which you are now out of. So um, that pain is gone. But um, yeah, there's lots of other troubles. Look, I've done a chart of enough people to know that um, Mars in the, in the seventh house brings you know, lacerations to the body, injuries... Um, some people have been shot at, fallen off ladders, broken all bones, um, had all sorts of martial aggressive energy in their um, relationships, etc., etc. So you're going to have to grab that by the horns and turn that energy around, brother. Um, 
Ma and all of these planets in the sixth house also uh, have to do with um, illness and um, weakness too. So watch out there for that conjunction. You do have a beautiful conjunction of Jupiter, Neptune, uh, Mercury and Venus. This is really, really gorgeous. It's it's certainly the most beautiful thing in your nature, and it's all centered in the heart. It's the heart. It's a very communicative heart that you have, and it wants to communicate rather, and it's um, it's it's loving and generous. So, and having the moon in the fifth house in Cancer, that is so exquisite. That is good for pleasure, and it's the house of children too. You will be you'll be a very very loving and very maternal kind of a father, born warrior. Yeah, yeah, very maternal in- instincts toward children. Really, this person, this individual. But uh, yeah, kind of sad though, really, to have four planets in the sixth house. You chose this for some reason. Um, you know, it will have to do with illnesses. It will probably cause some weakness to come to the body from time to time in your life. Uh, Pisces is in the ascendant. Pisces is a beautiful ascendant. Here is what uh, Firmicus says about the Pisces ascendant. The ascendant in Pisces makes the the native talented, intelligent, faithful, friendly. He will be in charge of affairs, but in such a way that he will always be someone's subordinate. Enemies will be easily overcome. Fame will come from some long-continued business in the course of time, and he will attain high position and great good fortune, and he will be famous for his many journeys. So, but the point is, Pisces being the ruler, now that's the water element, so the rulers of your uh, health will be um, Venus, then Mars, then the Moon. And in terms of health, the Moon is the healthiest ruler, and she is the last ruler of the water element. So, you know... Health will improve toward the latter part of the days, but your Venus and your Mars are definitely struggling. The first part of your life was definitely the um, the worst. So I don't I don't know what Philip has had in terms of illnesses um, and injuries, but uh, the worst part is definitely over. If he's around, he can make a comment. Yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing him on the board. If he's got a number, I have no idea what it is. So. Um yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't help you there. I'm just going over to uh, Facebook. Um, oh, okay. Which uh, Philip, you're on the board. Uh, what's your number? Just give me the area code. Or hit hit one on your uh, on your phone if you're on the phone. I'll know it. Well, if you if you've already hit it, I, I'll know. Which um, if you could just type into Facebook, which number? Seven two seven. Thank you. See how see how shit works. Just like that. Let me just bring you in here. Okay, Susie's got 727. Where's the other one? Looking, looking, looking. Okay, I'm not seeing you on the board. Oh, there you are. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, oops, just a sec. Oh, you hit one just as I (laughs) touch. As I (laughs) touch. Oh, hang on. Okay, don't do anything. i got to find your number again. There it is. Oh, yeah, your uh, your mic's hot. Hello? Hey, Hey, up there you are. Hello? Yeah, you're on. Okay. Uh yeah, that was uh that was awesome that chart reading. So so spot on. It's it's oh it's just good to hear it. Really is. Um Yeah, yeah take yeah. take a look at your Pluto in Scorpio. Five points because um Pluto loves being in Scorpio, that's his home. But um there's a lot of transformation going on. That is the house of transformation, and Pluto is the sign of transformation. And so, really, really need to be aware of that. Don't don't settle down and, and say, 
you know, um, I'm good now, but constantly transformed, constantly. I'm aware of this in my life. Every day I make sure that I feed the consciousness, you know, by studying, by meditating, by focusing, by transforming, etc., etc., You've got uh, you've got a really really powerful chart here in terms of transformation. Mm. Yeah, I was about to say the part about um, the injuries. Oh, the first part of my life, I've broken so many bones and just lots and lots of pain, physical pain, and uh, that was spot on. But the part about the I'll become famous for my many journeys. That's cool because I'm really um, kind of struggling with the c- career path thing right now. So. Uh, Hopefully that'll turn turn its uh, away soon. <laughs> oh, there will there will be stuff happening in your career. There's nothing. Yeah, well, there. you're hanging out with us. What do you expect? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do For the math, I mean, Philip. Do the math. You know, it's like <laughs> you, you know, this is kind of like the cutting edge table on the planet. So I think you're in good company. It's all good. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm going somewhere. It's just really stagnant right now, but I'm I'm definitely researching, studying, meditating, doing all that good stuff, so I'll, I'll be fine, I'm sure. Hanging out with the, the two greatest minds on the radio right now, Kate and Santos. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> I'd say probably, the, well, in my case, uh, <laughs> smart asses attitude on the radio, but other than that, yes, uh, yeah, we just call the shit out as we see it. You know, I, Santo, I got to say, and I think you can agree, we don't do anything special <laughs> at all. Nope. It's not a damn thing. We just kind of go, oh, cool, that's how it works. Let's play it that way. You know, it's like accepting natural law. What is that all about? <laughs> that's all. That's a, You know, that's and I keep saying that. Nothing makes anyone more special than anyone. Uh, we're just playing the game the way we're playing the game. And uh, yep, exactly. we got us a big party in Australia coming up. And you think I'm missing that? Not a chance. Not on my timeline. <laughs> See you at the beach. <laughs> yep. Great chart. That's for sure. Great chart. Yep. Thanks. Yeah, take advantage Take advantage of your uh, Jupiter conjunct, Mercury conjunct, Venus. Because um, this is really, really going to be um, a great, great thing coming from you. Um, depth, depth of wisdom, and and all the sciences and syncretic sciences are you know coming your way. You you'll be master of them all with a conjunction like that. Any time Mercury is near Jupiter, any time he's anywhere near Jupiter, um, here's what bon- Bonatti says uh, about that conjunction. It's a little beauty. Uh, you really you really want that that Jupiter. Uh, Mercury one. Yeah, right right now I'm reading the book you suggested, uh, The Light of Egypt by Thomas H. Burgoyne. It's really good. I mean, pretty yeah. awesome. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. That's one of the best syncretic books on the planet. That's where you will understand syncretism deeply. Best book for syncretism is that The Light of Egypt by Thomas H. Burgoyne. If, however, Mercury is joined to him, Jupiter... It signifies the knowledge of arithmetic and of all things which pertain to number and the knowledge of writing beyond other writers if he wished to study in it and philosophy, namely astronomy and all other quadrivial sciences. Now that's yours truly too. I have... um, Mercury conjunct Jupiter and the Sun, but you have Mercury conjunct Jupiter and Venus, so it's a way more loving, softer, and benefic one that you have. Nonetheless, uh, the Sun conjunct these two planets in my chart only really amplify, um, you know, what what the conjunction is and make it stronger and sturdier. So. In, in Firmicus Maternus says that um, Mercury conjunct Jupiter. Um, well, you just, we just read what Bonatti said, but uh, Firmicus says uh, something also very compliment, complimentary. Of course, it can't be but complimentary because Jupiter, anywhere near an, another planet, 
only enhances it and beautifies it. So both you and I have a be more beautified mercurial um, archetype in our temples, you know, because Jupiter is standing next to our Mercury, our intellect, hence the generosity, you know, um, and, I, and I am generous when it comes to communication. Um, so, you know, I'll get on the radio and talk as long as, until I drop. So, so let's have a look at Jupiter with Mercury. Uh, here we go. Jupiter and Mercury in conjunction make the natives powerful, outstanding in counsel and oratory, trained in all fields of learning, yeah, syncretism, and the objects of general admiration. They are particularly outstanding as orators for the fluency of their speech. Some, because of their intelligence and learning, will be in charge of royal letters and archives. So, um, so there you go. That's what you got. That's your gift. <laughs> well, send me over to the Vatican and I'll take a look at those archives. How about that one? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why I like hanging out with that kind of energy. Just, let's get her done. You know, it's it's. Uh, how did I put it? You're a creative, happy prick. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's perfect. You know, I, and I I gotta gotta say I've I've bumped into a, a few people in my life with that kind of energy, and it's there's never a dull moment. You know, so uh, well done, good uh, good game, good game. Now, uh, something else too. When you hear something what you deem to be negative in your chart, there's where you get the opportunity to go. Uh uh, and you can now instead of being at effect to it, now you can be cause over it. So you, this is why it's so critical to know this because you save yourself a ship full of bother. You know, if you if you knew this, why do you think they hide this stuff? They don't want you knowing your game, right? If you knew the shit that you're going to go through, it's it's in the consciousness to nullify, right? So uh, yeah, it's a, a perfect game plan, uh, and for those that um. Don't believe me. Just I, I, I'm walking, talking proof. Of, hey, you know, I can, I can follow my game plan. It led me to the yellow brick road, and uh, the rest they say is history. No, I was actually missed my story now. So, um, new game, same as the old. At least now I know how to play. <laughs> it's a little hard to play Monopoly when you don't know the rules, and someone else does, and they're, they're controlling the. The money, the hotels, the houses, the properties, how, how many dies get rolled and can throw you in jail whenever they feel like it. That's not a very fair game. Uh, so this is why we have to know ourselves. Because when we know ourselves, we suddenly get into that God mode, which is a really cool place to be. Just saying. So, and uh, we've got uh, about six minutes here. I got two people uh, that haven't got a chance to get in yet. It was area code seven zero eight, and um, you got a couple of minutes. And I've got uh, Bianca here as well. Uh, if you just want to jump in, oh, someone's got their speakers on. Who me? Well, there we go. Okay, that's yeah. Just uh, if you have speakers on and a mic, it's going to feed back. But that's better. Yeah, that must have been uh, Bianca. I did, yeah, I did have speakers on. Uh, it's all good. I like it's all to good. hear the show. <laughs> yeah, uh, you I, I just wanted to call, say hi. Excellent, Bianca. Okay. And sorry I didn't get you in earlier. I tried to get you in earlier, and then uh, you're, 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 I, I just clicked on, on your on your uh, mic to open it, and you and you fell off the board. So oh, anyway, no, it's all good. All right. Uh, and we have area code 708 on as well, so if you uh, comment, you want to jump in? Hey, Kate. Hey, Santos. It's Lori. Lori, how are you? Yes, it is. Hey. I, now I recognize the number. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing well. How about you guys? Good, good, good. So um, right. maybe we can roll you over the next week. Hey, yeah, no worries. It's always in now time. No big deal. Well, yeah, exactly, and uh, I mean, Santa, you've been hanging around a fair bit, so I uh, uh, and feel free if you want to do charts um, any night. You just let me know. I'm I'm cool with everything here. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll throw in all another night. You know, let's have some fun. Let's get everybody involved, get them all powered up, because that's all you're doing with these people is you're is you're showing them how they're got, and here's your game plan, and get with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like I like empowering people. It's really cool, and you've got uh, the most profound tool on the planet. <laughs> no. No, just hey, saying. Francis, what was that uh, website for the birth chart? 
horoscopeswithin.com. Great, Ben. Thank you. You got it. And we have Lynn, if you want to say a quick hi. Hi. Hey, hello. There you, have, there you are. Hi. Um, yes, I had a question. I'm an Enigma man. I finally found my birth certificate, and there's no birth time on it. So oh, there won't is be. it just oh, nighttime and daytime? I'm sorry, what would you say? Yeah, there won't be not on a birth certificate. They just want the the birth uh, um, date. That's it. Yeah, they would. They so, wouldn't want you to know that. Right, right. And of course, mother says, "Well, that was a really long time ago, then. I can't remember." But so, um, in uh, on the website, they have you put noon. So I'm thinking, is it just kind of a either you were born during the day or born during the night kind of thing? Or how, I mean, is that really super duper important to know? Yes, it is. Lynn, I'm going to get you to meditate on it. You know okay. when you were born. You know when you got here. Trust yourself. You will give yourself the correct answer. I promise. Right on. Right on. Yeah. Okay. No one, know, no one knows but you and mom. <laughs> there you go. All right, go. so yeah, yeah we're, we're in the last minute here, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna say the last couple of things and let Santo uh, wrap up his show. And but I want to say a great big thank you to everybody that uh, call uh, that sits at the table, calls in, gets involved, has a bit of fun with us, and starts to see the game as it's really playing. And of course, Santo, uh, Astro Theology Extraordinaire, uh, no rivals as far as I'm concerned. Um, Thank you so much, my friend. So your uh, your final thoughts? Oh, uh, <clears throat> I would just uh, well, yeah, just to, to uh, encourage folks to <clears throat> continue uh, sharing the uh, audio files, hammer it, hammer it, and um, expose expose the good and the evil, and um, this way the evil ones get a chance to um, you know stop their 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 crooked deeds, and we can all get together on the planet and have one big party and enjoy it. You know, um, they are lucky. They are really, really lucky that we have awakened. 